We are live. We are what? Uh, what is today? The third? We are nine days away from the Xbox Bethesda Showcase. And uh, we got a big episode for you guys. I'm one of your hosts, Randall Thor 19 the man with the million. And as always, this is the Xbox 2 Podcast, or some people refer to it as Jez Corden's Xbox 2 Podcast, or the Jezcast. <laughs> And with me, uh, the man of the hour, the one everybody tunes in for, Jez Corden lies. of Windows Central. What's going on, buddy? Hey, man. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. I am not going to lie to you. I'm a little bit hungover today because it was the Queen's Jubilee this week. I thought that meant it was her birthday, but apparently it doesn't mean that. So I'm not very good at being British. But regardless, it's an excuse to have a day off and I have a load of alcohol. So that's exactly what I did. And you know what I did while I was drinking around yesterday? What'd you do? I finally got to catch up on the the best movie of the 21st century. That's what they're calling it. Morbius. Have you have you heard of this did movie? You, did you Morbius? Did you watch it because you really wanted to see it, or were, did you fall into the hole? Because you're you're one who loves memes, loves it. So did you, like, did, you, like did, you did you did you want did you watch Morbius because you 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 just wanted to be able to scream at the top of your lungs? It's Morbin time, <laughs> and be be cool with well, the kid, kiddos making all those dumb memes. Well, it's, it's, it was kind of like, it was a planned thing. My fam sort of like, they, they decided we, we need to watch this because everyone says it's unironically good. Uh, or, um, ironically bad or whatever. And it's, you know, you, you watch it with a sense of irony. And if you watch it in that context, then you can enjoy it. But it, it, it wasn't even like ironically fun. It was, it was terrible. It was awful. And I actually, I actually resent the memes now because it lures people into a false sense of, you know, actually, you know, watching it. And nah, it, it's, it was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Well, for a long time, at least. Mm. <laughs> and I, I was so offended that I can't even join in on the memes. Nobody should watch this movie. Literally nobody. Don't, don't fall for it like I did. Don't watch it for the memes. It's not worth it. You know, but, uh, the movie yeah, theaters fell for the yesterday. memes because it's actually coming back to movie theaters, even though it's already out on DVD, yeah. Blu-ray, streaming. Well, it's actually not streaming, but you can rent it. It's actually coming back to a thousand movie theaters because they think people are actually going to show up. <laughs> I think <laughs> I saw a great tweet earlier where someone was like, "It wouldn't it be hilarious if it flops twice?" <laughs> it's the only movie that can flop twice in history. Uh, but, uh, uh, no, no, nobody should see this movie. Like, unless you, unless you're really wasted, it's impossible to watch. So, yeah, yeah, that's more been time. It's indeed. So we got a lot to talk about. This is our predictions episode. Even though we will have a show next week on Friday, even though Jez is like, should we have a show next week? And I'm like, of course we need to have a show next week. Uh, I'm gonna ask around to see if we can get some guests to come on to talk about Xbox give their predictions, expectations, that sort of stuff. We sort of did it last year when we had Lord Cognito from ILP on. We had Special Nick from Xbox Era on, who's going to be on the hot seat this E3 because he's saying Gears Collection is going to be there. So he better be crossing Ooh. his fingers that uh, <laughs> you know that, that it's actually real. Uh, and we also had Cold Eastwood and, and the one and only Beast Fire Tim Dog. Uh, so hopefully we can grab a few people and have a, have a blast on Friday, a couple days before the showcase. Um, so we're going to talk about what we expect to see and a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, Sony had their state of play. 
Uh, people are screaming, stop the count when it comes to the Xbox Series S. It's unfair. <laughs> it's unfair, Jez. So, I did say that. If you guys could do us a big favor before we get into all these juicy topics, can you make sure you hit that like button and uh, share this out on Twitter or wherever you share things. We'd appreciate it. But first, we have to make mention that once again, the Xbox Two podcast is powered by Manscaped. Manscaped. You know, Rand, it's Father's Day just around the corner. And what better way to celebrate than where you originally came from? That's right, gentlemen. Father's Day is just around the corner. And our friends at Manscaped are here to ensure all the father figures out there are looking daddy material this June. Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, which includes the signature lawnmower 4.0, is the perfect bundle to tackle any and all old man hair from head to toe. That's right. There's no dad joke here. Treat him and yourself and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. Get 20% off, free shipping, boxes, cologne, razors, shavers, literally everything you can imagine with the code xb2 at manscaped.com so yeah manscaped yeah. xb2 check out all the stuff and uh thanks to manscaped for once again powering the xbox 2 podcast yes i mean not as good as your ad my ad read last time when uh starfield and redfall got delayed but you know serviceable serviceable <laughs> and that that was maybe the best one uh but yes, thanks Manscaped for supporting the show. Thanks everybody for being here on this Friday. This is like, I don't know, what, what it's been, like four Fridays in a row now, Jez? We making this a thing? Yeah. We Well, that's yeah, also we, because... We, we, we're doing it. It's also because, well, tomorrow we're going to be guesting on, a win, uh, what is it, uh, Miles Don Pia's Windows <sighs> Central Chatterdays early in yes. the morning. And then uh, we just recorded an episode with uh, the Defining Dukes, Mr. Matty Plays and Lord Cognito, which I believe is up for their Patreons now, and I think will go free for everybody on Sunday. So, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of guest appearances this week, because it's a big week. You know, it's basically E3, it you know. Our and, Super Bowl. Uh, it's, yeah, it's our Super Bowl, essentially. So... Um, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be a fun show because I have basically all the, just kind of the refresher in my mind of like each studio and what we could essentially see from everything. But let me get to a few of these super chats, uh, before we, uh, before we delve into this stuff. We have one from Jeremy G that says Tom Warren is playing banjo on his steam deck and Phil Spencer was also (laughs) playing banjo this week as well. Banjo hype or mm-hmm. banjo hopium? Now it's interesting because I saw this, I believe, on the reset reset era forums, the Xbox thread, the only thread worth visiting on that hellhole of a website. Um, great posters in there, Jazz. They love our podcast, by the way. The the people the people uh, in that thread, and somebody that automatically had, makes them great. Somebody said that Phil had just loaded up banjo and got his first achievement. It was like. Hey, Phil just Phil's playing banjo. Sometimes, you know, he he plays things in preparation. There's 12 days to the Xbox showcase and there's 12 achievements in banjo. Is Phil trying to tell us something? And now Jeremy <laughs> G's saying that Tom Warren is playing banjo. So is there a banjo conspiracy Ooh. going on there? Are, are people are we getting prepped for a banjo remake announcement at this year's show or is this is this is this all just a cruel joke, Jez? Could they, you know, this could be your bold prediction. You could, you know, go out and be like, you know what? It's happening. Banjo's going to be announced at this year's E3, this year's <laughs> showcase. That could be your bold prediction. Let all the Banjo bros, uh, let them know that it's coming and it's hype. What do you think, Jez? Is, should we I, I be reading don't into know. these I'm, things? Uh, I, I'm scared to make these kind of predictions where it's like, you know... It's it's more like what you hope to see because people people take predictions from people like us a bit seriously sometimes, you know. Well, not me. And they'll be like, "Oh my god, 
what why not i mean because you're either? the ones who you're you are the ones well look i get your he- hesitance because it, like jeff grubb your predictions or stuff you say tend to hold more weight and people write articles about them and then you'll have to like come out and be like uh-huh. well no i didn't really no i mean that was just me speculating right i didn't i don't i don't have any sources yeah. on that it happens and it happens quite a bit so you always do got to make sure and maybe you just need to come out and say, listen, this is a prediction. Like, I don't know. I guess you could just say right out the top, like, unlike the previous couple of years, do you actually know everything that's in this showcase, Jez? I don't know thing. I know like a couple of very, a couple of things, a couple of major things that are gonna be there. And like some of them are fairly like obvious that you would know that anyone could probably guess, probably. You know. But a lot, for the most part, I'm in the dark. I don't, I don't know. I haven't sought to know, honestly. Um, I could probably find some things out if I wanted to, but I haven't really, I don't really want to dig too much far into it because I've said that I wouldn't spoil the show even if I knew, and I won't. So you know, if there's no reason for me to dig into it, part of me is just like I want to, I want to be surprised along with everyone else, you know. So I haven't been digging and. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm kind of going in blind. So, but that being said, we can still do a lot of educated guesswork, right? Yeah, yeah. So about, um, about banjo. when it comes banjo to bat, yeah. So with regards to banjo, the fact that they put it in Smash Brothers at all to me says that they don't want the IP dead. Okay. They recognise that the IP's got some kind of legs. They recognise that maybe someday, some way, somehow, somewhere, some when. <laughs> <laughs> that banjo could come back. And I think it is just a matter of time before we see banjo again. Because I don't think they would have put it into Smash Bros to give people that full sense of hope, you know? Um because the internet broke when they included banjo into uh Smash Brothers. People of a certain age really, really love banjo. For some people it's like their Mario or their Sonic, and I totally appreciate that. You know, even as someone who's never replayed really it before, I get it. Because, you know, I'm hyped for things like, you know, Warcraft and stuff. You know, games that I played as a kid. So, <clears throat> that being said, will it be at the show? I have no idea. I want to believe that they found some dev to pick it up. You know, I always thought the ukulele devs was were an obvious pick to, to you know, pick up that game. Maybe they had a good pitch for it. And Microsoft were like, yeah, okay, we'll fund that. You know, um, I want to believe that that's true. And I certainly think it's possible. But I certainly haven't heard anything at my end to even hint at that. Is Phil playing banjo a hint? Could be. As I'm saying, you know. It definitely it, could be. You got the Phil shelf. Now we got what Phil's playing. I mean, Tom Warren's playing it too. These are, these are some, some clues we can't just overlook, Jazz. Yeah, I, I think it is quite intriguing that Phil was playing it. So... Yeah, Phil. Phil knows that people people check out what he's doing on Xbox Live because yeah, um, Phil's pu- profile is public. So I'm going to be a little bit more firm than you because you're waffling. You know, we don't want any waffling on today's <sighs> show. We want direct answers. <sighs> yes, no's. You don't want maybes. We don't want I don't knows. So I'm just going to come out and I don't want to do this because I want my Banjo Bros to get their games. You know, like I see Mr. Boomstick always saying that he wants it to come back and even though i don't care for banjo i want you guys to have your game unfortunately i don't think it's going to be at the show i'm going to come out and say Mm. with the firm no but hey if it is there we'll look back on phil playing it and be like you know what the clues were there all in front of us the whole time and we'll just every time phil plays something right before showcase you know, like next year, what if he, a couple days beforehand next year, he, what if he's playing Rise? You know, like, oh, <laughs> Rise 2 is about to get announced, right? So I'm going to say no. Or Killer Instinct. Or Killer. Ooh. Yeah, Killer Instinct. <laughs> uh, Eric in the super chat says Does Jez dip fries and mayo to beat to the beat of the intro? A gif of his hand doing that <laughs> would be great. Mm. That's interesting. You and your mayo. Uh, we we need to hit up Sean Labrie to make a, a Mayo gif using the using the assets from the from the from the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a cool idea. Let's see what else we got here. Um, 
We got one from Percolator9000. He says, I feel like Rand needs a nap. He's grumpy. What do you think, Jez? Have a great show. Do I need it? Am I grumpy? <laughs> How am I grumpy? Oh, uh, maybe. You are, you, you are a little bit grumpy sometimes, you know. You're dash, dashing people's hopes and dreams of Banjo right, right out the gate. That's pretty grumpy, right? I mean, I'm just trying to set expectations. I mean, I would be... I, I'm not saying I wouldn't be against it. In fact, maybe it could close the show, but... <laughs> I just don't. We got we got a super. Would, chat would from... a game like that really close the show? I don't think so. You don't think so? <clears throat> nah, probably. I think it could. You know, with the goodwill and everything. Like, oh, here's this game. It's back. It's a uh, kind of like a fan service. But yeah, maybe 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 not ending the show. Oh, oh. But people would love it if it was there. I just don't think it's there yet. Uh, Zero Crimson with the super chat, but he retracted the message, so I don't know what it says. Thank you. Uh, Nick Prime says, any update on Killer Instinct? I'm going to ask this every episode. I need this game. F Street Fighter. Well, if you listen to last week's episode, Jez is of the opinion that he doesn't think a new Killer Instinct actually exists yet. Right, Jez? Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not sure if, if those rumors about a new Killer Instinct being in development was ever actually a real thing. I mean, I could be wrong, but... I, I, dug, I dug into that. I dug into that, and I couldn't find a shred of credible info about it. So, you know, maybe I was looking in the wrong places, and maybe it is there, and it's just really well hidden or something. But I, I personally don't believe it. But who knows, you know? I, I think it could be there. But I right now, I think Microsoft's still probably looking for the right dev um, and, and stuff like that. You know, maybe they found it. Maybe they're already developing it, but I don't think so. But I could be wrong. Could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong because I like Killer Instinct. Yeah, and I would like to see Killer Instinct come back. Uh, Ronnie Kennedy says, "What book are you currently reading, Rand?" Also, looking forward to a great jazz interview this week. Yes, <laughs> everybody's looking forward to the jazz interview. I'm currently reading uh, "Before They Are Hanged" from Joe Amber Crombie, Amber Crombie, which is the second book in the First Law trilogy. Uh, it's kind of grim, dark fantasy. Very much, very much like Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. A lot of morally great characters doing kind of uh, bad things or good things, but you don't you don't know who's the bad characters or who the good characters are because they're just kind of, you know, they ride that middle. There's no like this is a good character and this is an evil character, right? Like your typical good versus evil, Lord of the Rings style stuff. This is very much. Every, everybody's like morally gray and it's uh fantastically written i'm loving it so yeah um i know jez has been playing diablo immortal uh this week yeah and you had a lot of positive things to say but then you said the pc version is not good so that's kind of interesting yeah man I, i'm addicted you know i it plays really great on mobile I, I think it's probably got some of the best mobile controls that i've ever experienced in a game super responsive really punchy and um you know handles really well but on the on the downside uh, the pc port is probably the worst video game port i've ever seen in my entire life really even worse than, literally like, batman arkham knight when it came out on pc which is basically unplayable i don't know if you remember that yeah t- ten, 10 times worse wow. 10 times worse 10 times worse okay it, it's it's horrible uh, crashy Client just closes. It can't detect my Xbox controller. It's got like no real features for PC users. You can't scale the UI. You can't do anything like that. It's it's horrible, man. It's it's truly truly terrible. So, but it is great on mobile. You know, it's a mobile game, and I think the fact that they didn't advertise the PC version was pretty much an admission of guilt that it was trash. And I think the fact they're calling it an open beta is kind of a hint that the game isn't finished. There's, it's quite buggy. It's, it's quite rough around the edges. But on PC, I'm um, on mobile. I'm having quite a blast with it. It's very addictive. Um, I haven't come across any like egregious microtransactions yet. It's got a battle pass, like pretty much every free to play game, and the battle pass gives you like plenty of good stuff, you know. Um, and that's just a one-off purchase and it's it's not like it's not like every time i do a quest it's like spamming me in the face you should buy this you should buy this no it's it's like fairly out of the way so you know so far i'm pretty happy with it you know so 
No, I just I'm... think it's weird that it's not on Xbox or even Nintendo Switch even. Yeah, I'm just I'm waiting for Diablo Four. You you can have your Diablo Mortal. I'll wait for the the real product, the real game. Yeah, this it's definitely an app. It's well, I wouldn't even call it an appetizer. It's it's like a Diablo snack, you know. Ooh. If you're like fed up of Diablo Three and you you don't really gel with Diablo Two because some of its archaic systems, like I'm kind of enjoying it as a sort of Diablo snack to hold me over from uh, while I wait for um. Diablo uh four. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. Um Spider Man says, Thank you, Sony, for showing me what I'll be playing on my Xbox. Resident Evil Four Remake, Street Fighter Six, and Stray. Is Stray multi platform? I, I, I have no idea. I, I I don't know if it if it was, but I'm I'm because mm, I know Stray they actually that's included in the the upper tiers of the PlayStation Plus thing. Um Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Stray's multi-platform. I didn't if if it is, I didn't see that announcement. Either way, I want to play as a cat. So, yeah. Um let's see what we also got here. We got uh, Francisco Rodriguez says always laughing my ass you guys. Here's a little tip for my drinking buddy. Great thumbs up ad. <laughs> Jez, Jez is always good with those. Aquaman says uh, something, uh, I don't know what, the, oh, he says Penrose X versus the Steel Series Arctic Nova Pro, or I think two headsets he's wanting you to compare and Nova contrast. Pro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you, Nova Pro. The Penrose is, what, the Penrose is well overpriced, so I would say Nova Pro every day. <clears throat> I reviewed this, I'm reviewing this headset, at the Steel Series Nova Pro. $350 of headset round. It's not cheap. Damn. It, but it is it is incredible. It's an incredible headset. Um it really is. So, but you really have to want to use it with everything because it's like Bluetooth and it's it can connect to Xbox and PlayStation to the same wireless signal. So like I think I feel like unless you're going to use all of the features, it's probably not worth it. But if you're someone like me and like, you know, using my headset on PC and using my headset on Xbox, like it's really convenient for that purpose. And also because it's got a digital audio controller, you also kind of need it if you're playing games on at your desk. If you play games at your sofa and you put your digital audio controller over the other side of the room, it's kind of pointless, right? But yeah, I think it is better value for money than the Penrose X, unless you can get the Penrose X like much cheaper. So I think that retailed for $300 when it launched as well. Mm. But yeah. Uh, Goldshell says, so. shout out to Nixus, Spider-Man on PC. And you know what? Miles Dompier is in the chat, and he's just being really mean to me. I'm just going to no-show his episode tomorrow. You, you, you and him can just do a show together, you know? He just comes into the chat talking about, oh, Rand's going to have some bad takes, you know? This, wow. this, this, is, this is the guy that also, like, stands for Pokemon constantly, you know? And and is um, and is like you're not you're not feeling you're not feeling the Scarlet Pokemon Scarlet Violet no hype. and and then and then and Miles is like please yeah. bring Legend of Mana to Xbox I really want this RPG from 1992 you know like, <laughs> crying about RPGs from 30 years ago <clears throat> come on Miles Whoa. do better or else I'm just gonna I'm t- you know what I'm gonna say I'm just gonna be like I overslept bro I'm sorry I di- I forgot to set my alarm. <laughs> No, no, and I was just on Windows Central's uh, podcast too, not not that long ago. Miles is trying to double dip, get me back on real, real, real fast. We'll see how that happens. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Findlay Brookman says thoughts on Avowed releasing in 2022. I've seen this pop up oh. here and there that uh, suddenly people expect Avowed to launch this year, mainly because like Starfield got moved. I know, I know Maddie in our, uh, when we, we did Defining Duke with them on Wednesday, he's very much of the opinion that Avowed is this year, which would be fantastic if it was true, because they'd be like, hey, man, Obsidian, they're, they're a damn good developer. Um, but I'm placing my bets that Avowed is next year. Jez, do you think there's any chance that uh, we could get we could see Avowed this holiday? Man, I think there's like, there's always a tiny chance, but... That that makes the assumption that Microsoft wanted to launch Starfield and Avowed in the same time window, which to me makes no sense. So, like, you can't, like, bringing a game forward several months is, 
not something that typically happens, you know. So for me, I don't think it's this year, but who knows? You know, crazier things have happened, right? Microsoft bought Blizzard. I mean, in the age of every game getting pushed further away, you don't really see games getting pulled forward often. No, and even if they do get pulled forward, it's usually like a week or two, not like several months. So So I, I don't believe, I don't believe uh a and b says assuming there would be mostly gameplays at the june 12 showcase what would be your minimum expectations to consider it successful in a good showcase uh i mean obviously a bunch of gameplay is i think that's uh, what people want from the showcase at least from the comments i always read in, in the live chat and the negatives that people have from the last two showcases was that they focused too heavily on CGI without any release windows. As I think the two biggest complaints, too much CGI and not enough release dates or release windows. So in my opinion for if Xbox can address those two things and have mostly gameplay alongside a, a decent roadmap. I'm not saying you need to have like every game needs to be like, this is March 5th. This is June 6th, but like a roadmap where you could look at 2023 and be like, Oh, okay. There's like five, six games that Xbox is putting out in 2023. Now I know people went crazy yesterday. Cause Jeff Grubb said that like, you know, a lot of Xbox's games are 2024 and 2025. It's like, yeah, of course. Cause they ain't releasing everything next year, but I do believe there's a good handful of games that Xbox is putting out in 2023 and then a lot more games in tw- and then more games in 2024 and more games in 2025, you know, usually don't release that many games in a year. So if you got gameplay and if you got a good kind of roadmap for 2023, I think that's a pretty good showcase. I mean, last year's people loved and I think the only gameplay we saw was from Forza Horizon 5. And mm. if you actually have more announcements with more gameplay in that same style of presentation with that same style of pacing, I think I think the showcase would, would, would was going to be good. Do you, do you have anything you want to add to that, Jez? Yeah, I agree. You know, it, I don't have a lot to add there. You know, from, I mean, I can speak for myself, you know. I want to see, and this is kind of like, it's almost greedy, you know. I want to see surprises. Ooh. And it's it's funny because I'm saying that after, like, you leaked you know, everything, yeah. Digging uh-huh. and find, yeah. So I'm like, I, I just kind of, I'm so greedy that I want even more, you know. <laughs> and this is why I guess they don't like leaks, you know. So I want to kind of see, I want to see, like, um, well, I suppose, like, even stuff that, as leaked right so we know like say for example project dragon i don't expect to see project dragon at the show um but just for imagining that it is there i kind of want to be surprised about the scale and the scope and the quality i want because i've kind of like my expectations for microsoft exclusives is honestly generally on the lower end now you know i kind of expect um to have fun games from microsoft but not like sort of landmark mind-blowing experiences you know kind of so i want to be surprised by the quality of what they've got coming up i want i want like i want to see state of decay go to the next level i want to see like obsidian take their form formulas to the next level i want to see all these studios take you know i just want to see next level stuff you know i want to see i want to see that increased investment put to work and i want to see i want to see launch windows that i can sort of point to and be like well this is this is what i can expect from the next 12 months of gaming yeah so yeah i'll be happy about that surprises ooh surprises i, I mean everybody loves surprises i want I, I i like surprises too so i want some of that mm-hmm. flame and the super chat says got my nose hair trimmer from manscaped uwu thanks lads for the discount <laughs> next week is going to be amazing also rand you do need a nap and scale bound what's with the everyone saying i need a nap what is this coming from is this like Gaz's like happy birthday thing? I don't understand. How do... we need to nip this in the bud. Rand does not need a nap. And uh, yeah, scale bound. Maybe maybe that'll end the show. Jazz, are, are you going behind my back and just telling people to say I need a nap or something? Is this what's going on? I don't get it. <laughs> no, 
No. Okay. But I, I don't know. Maybe you do need a nap. I don't know. Aragato Sir. He says, what do you guys <laughs> think of Diablo Immortals? I love the gameplay and visual, but these microtransactions are insane. Never thought COD Mobile is less pay to win than a Diablo more Diablo mobile game. Love the show. Yeah, Jez is loving the <laughs> loving the game too, but more like the phone version. And you said the microtransactions yeah. don't bother haven't... you, right? Well, I haven't really hit that wall yet. Like mo- free to play games, they have this tendency of like they give you they give you sort of like yeah, this is the game, you know, get hooked on the game, get hooked on the game, and then you eventually slam into this wall where it's like okay, if you want to if you want to complete if you want to continue progressing, now you've got to start paying. So like when I hit that wall and I start feeling like the game won't let me play unless I pay, I'll just quit because it's kind of like mm. well how how much am I going to have to pay? you know per year you know that's true so at that at that point it stops being fun and it starts being a sort of uh i don't know a budget concern you know mm. i have to i have to weigh up how much i want to spend each month in the game and i don't really want to do that because i don't play games for that reason so if i do reach that point with it i'll just drop off it's kind of like you know in hearthstone in hearthstone you can just sort of like you can buy the the deck the expansion and then you're pretty much set for the whole season, you know, the whole year. You can pretty much keep a meta deck and it'd be good enough to get like, you know, a good, a good, a decent enough win rate and have some fun. And I kind of feel like that's fair, you know, free to play game. But a lot of these free to play games are kind of like, we want you to pay like every week. We expect you to pay every single damn week. And I just want to do that. I just want to do it. So if I do hit that wall, I'll uninstall that shit and never look back. Mm. Because. That's lame. Nobody, nobody should condone that shit. But whatever. Just a couple people said that you're you, that you sound a tad weird. You sound like you're all bass almost. You're more. Like, uh, do I sound like that for you? Like uh, a tad bit. You, you, you do sound a little bit, a little bit uh, bassy. My voice is my voice is a bit whiskey fired at the oh, moment because okay. I am hungover. Okay, you are hungover. So okay. if. if if I sound weird, it's because I'm a bit hungover. I don't think it's the mic, because I haven't, I haven't, I'm using the same mic I always use. Uh, yeah. So fair enough. Know. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Donna uh, Taku says in the super chat: Avowed versus Final Fantasy 16 in 2023. Fantasy Western RPG versus Fantasy JRPG. Xbox exclusive versus PS exclusive. 23, 23 is about to be crazy, barring any delays. That is definitely true. Um. Let's see here. What else we got? Uh, Aaron, who's been a member for 20 months, says, thanks for the content getting me through my divorce. Uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, I hope, uh, hope everything goes well for you, man. Um, let's see. Ronnie Kennedy says, Jez, get drunk and spill the insider info. But Jez just said he doesn't know the show, so you never really have any insider info to give you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, Javier says, I want more exclusives that aren't on PlayStation. Uh Opathen says, sorry if I covered, but any news on In Exile's games? We'll be going over In Exile and what we expect from each one of the studios uh, during the show. So I, I think Jazz, me and Jazz might be split on that one. Uh, Steady Flow says, what up, fellas? Why wait for August when you can play Spider-Man and Miles Morales and PS Plus Extra for $15 a month and $100 a year this month, June 13th? Uh, William says, do you know the Pent- Pentiment camera perspective? Do you know anything about the Pentiment camera perspective, mm. Jez? Or you just know what the I don't, was? I, 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 don't, I honestly don't know what the camera's perspective is. I think there's a chance it might be... I don't think it's going to be full 3D. I think it's either going to be isometric or like a Disco Elysium or it might even be side-scrolling. You know? Um, I don't believe it's going to be fully 3D, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I have no, I have no idea on that right now. I just kind of expect, ju- judging by like some of Josh Sawyer's more recent games, and judging by the fact that it has been compared to Disco Elysium, I do kind of expect it to be that kind of gameplay perspective. But well, I guess we'll see. Yeah, Achievement says y'all like ranch with your pizza or just mayo? Please no, neither, <laughs> neither, none of them. You don't dip God. your pizza in mayo? No, Jazz. Neither do you. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Uh, I might do it just for you, man. No, please. Well, if you do, take a picture because I don't want you to just like I did it. But we need proof, you know. We need the receipts. 
Uh, you always said to me that you would try mayo and fries and you never did. Yeah, I never did. That's because of how much I hate mayo. Wow. Uh, uh, Keyshawn nice. Thompson says, here's the fable. I know it's not coming, but I refuse to believe there's not an ounce of fable content coming. Also, here's to a great show. Thank you. Yeah, fable. Fables uh, was in the news a little bit this week, Jez. Um, our buddy, uh, Gaz, said that he had heard some things about fables development and that they were having problems with the forza tech engine and etc etc uh then some came out about scope being reduced which prompted a fable developer to talk about scoping and triple a projects and stuff uh what have you heard about fable development in general i've heard it's going fine you know and some of that some of that scoping stuff you know features being removed and whatever it's funny because I was in a gameplay preview this week where the dev- the developer was literally talking about how the, the the game kept getting delayed because they couldn't stop adding features, you know. And that's when you like you have a scoping problem is when and they call it they call it think they call it feature creep sometimes. Where you just keep adding features, you keep adding features and it, it means your game keeps getting delayed and delayed and it can sort of lead to sort of overlapping can cascading problems and uh, you end up in a situation where the game's just delayed a million years out of, you know, uh, what you originally planned. So when scoping isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just means the game will be more focused. I mean, you have to sort of think like, does every game need every single feature you can imagine, you know, like, does Fable need a player housing system? Does it need the ability to fly? Does it need this? Does it need that? So, I don't know. I don't think people should be alarmed by the idea of a, a game having reduced scope. Because not having every single feature and the kitchen sink in your game is not necessarily a good thing, you know? But yeah. Sometimes uh, less is more, you know? Yeah, plus, we'll see. plus you don't even know what the scope originally was and what they removed. Like it's just yeah, and it's funny because a lot of a lot of the, are... a lot of the developers that responded to her would be like, "Yep, normal part of game development happens all the time." It's just yeah. well, you you said it, that like kind of like you said people think people... you said people think that game development's like building Legos. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you know. I, it's because I I was I've seen some of the replies to that stuff and people were like, oh, the game's in development hell, and it's just like, oh, come on, you know. But people fill in fill in the gaps in their imagination with regard, um, fill in the gaps in their knowledge with imagination, right? You know, and sometimes like we we fill in the gaps in our knowledge with uh, negative imagination, you know, and fear and anxiety, and then people who are like-minded to spread FUD, they jump on that and they seize that opportunity to spread uncertainty and fear and doubt in the Xbox community. And I saw a load of that, you know, and a lot of them were acting like building games as simple as, you know, building Legos, as you say in America. Man, so, some people, some British people on my, on my feed were calling me out because we say Lego in Britain. The, pr- the plural of Lego is just Lego in mm. Europe. Legos, sir. It's only Americans who say Legos. Legos. Yeah. No, it's, it's Lego. It is Lego. Mm. Officially, it's Lego. That's, that's Lego I, headquarters. I, I, really, I, I, I really want to see Fable, by the way. I'm I, I'm a big Fable fan. Really liked uh, 1 and 2. 3 was kind of... Eh. 3 was alright, but like it wasn't as good as the first two. I even played Fable the Journey on Connect. I even played the Fable Heroes game, which was an XP, Xbox Live arcade game. Like I think I've played a lot all the I think I even played Fable Pub Games, which was another Xbox Live Arcade game. So I'm a I'm a Fable fan. And I kinda wanna see what that game looks like. <laughs> you know, like I know we saw the CGI trailer, but you know, does that really represent what the game's aesthetic is going to be? We don't know. Um and Playground I mean you can make an argument like Forza Horizon five is like the best looking game on xbox series x and if that's what they can do with a racing game imagine what they can do with this so like i kind of want to see it um but we'll get into our predictions a little bit later if you guys are enjoying the show please do us a big favor make sure you hit the like button hopefully we can get it up to like i don't know 600 or 700 before the show ends that'd be 
absolutely fantastic. Uh, Achievement says, Jez, try a little hair of the dog. Whatever that means. I don't know if you... Is that, is uh, that, hair of the is that dog. a drink? Is that is something? Nah, what, what hair of the dog is, man, is when like you hung over uh, and you have some alcohol to sort of slip you mm. out of being hung over and back into being drunk. Okay. <laughs> Basically. I mean, I don't have any alcohol here, so I unfortunately cannot do hair of the dog thing at the moment. Uh, BC says, Rip. hey, fellas, my quarterly ask for an update on where League of Legends Wild Rift is on console. Also, so happy about Street Fighter coming back to Xbox. Yeah, I have no idea about Wild Rift. Uh, that's that's the console port or the console game that Riot is making. Um, I guess it'll yeah. show up whenever. I mean... I don't know, because when you talk about this E3 and this showcase, I do expect there to be some third-party part, third party games at Xbox's show, but I'm not sure how many. And I don't know if, like, Riot would show up there with a, one of their games. It seems to me like Riot would do their own thing during their own announcements or whatever, so. Uh, yeah, I, I want to play Wild Rift. I think it looks really good. And if you go to the website, it just says coming soon to consoles and it's nowhere to be seen so yeah. that's that's the thing that a few people just don't accept that you don't need consoles you know riot barely barely supports consoles they basically valorant's PC, pc exclusive and then most of their games are just mobile and pc and they don't even bother supporting consoles at all so you know they probably want like sony and microsoft to to offset some of the risk by paying like a content acquisition fee or something so maybe those negotiations are ongoing but i don't know i do hope it comes because there's no good mobas on console that are fresh smite is so it's old, old. At this old. Point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's old as hell smite, smite is old yeah. uh treybone 408 says in the super chat i tried ubisoft's free-to-play rollerblade game and i felt like and it felt like i walked into a microtransactions mall. I installed that game real real quick, shaking my head. That's the thing about Ubisoft. Yeah. Ubisoft has these all these free-to-play games that they're making, but they just throw them out with no fanfare. Like, Roller Champions is like, oh, by the way, Roller Champions coming next week and it's out. And no support. Like, that game's probably not going to last that long. Then they still have, like, X Defiant... They even have that other one that leaked not that long ago. It leaked and then they announced it. I can't even remember the name. There's like a free-to-play like division game. So it's like they just have all these things, but it seems like they're just gonna throw all this stuff at, at you know like at the wall to see what sticks, and hopefully one mm. of them actually does well. You know that's that's the thing about live service games and stuff is that people kind of already have their game that they're really enjoying. And, uh, you know, the market is extremely saturated, so it's, it's kind of hard to get, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to get to any momentum. And, uh, it doesn't, especially with like Ubisoft, like barely promoting these, these things. It's like, they kind of just seem like they're just sending it out to die. Like, well, game's finished. Just send it out there. We don't expect much from it. So, uh, I have a couple of my friends that are playing it who, who quite like it, but I think they've already stopped playing it. So. Uh, Francisco yeah. says, will the new Quake remake bring multiplayer? Yeah, new, uh, so a lot of people believe id software is working on a new Quake. I think that's a, a rumor from our buddy Special Nick. He, he's, he's been saying uh. that the, that, uh, id's working on a new Quake with the female protagonist. Um, I mean, the thing with <laughs> multiplayer is, they it dropped multiplayer for the second game like they had multiplayer for doom 2016 uh, yeah but i believe they didn't even make that i want to say somebody else made doom's multiplayer like yeah it was splash it like damage or something or or it could have been like, I, yeah. like that. and for doom eternal they just completely dropped the versus multiplayer they went with that uh like invasion mode that nobody really seemed to care Battle. for battle mode yeah so that was doom 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 Doom. eternal's pvp was just yeah the worst it was horrible but um i like but quake quake is kind of known for pvp and multiplayer so part of me wants to believe they would give it a, a try 
But at the same time, it's like, man, is there sort of an is there an, even an audience for arena based shooters these days? Like they, I thought Doom twenty sixteen multiplayer was pretty good, and I play I played it a fair bit. You know, I thought it was like this is a pretty cool modern take on, you know, arena shooter, and they had the whole ultimate mode where you ultimate ability where you could like turn into a, a demon for a little while, which was hilarious when you when you got it. You know, and you fly around the map as a revenant, shooting rockets at everyone. It's hilarious, but um, at the same time, I dropped off it pretty quick because there was not like there wasn't a pr- progression system in the sort of I kind of like what I I kind of want that out of a modern game. Like I want to feel like I'm earning something while playing, and it's it's sad because we never we never expected that of games in the nineties. You know. Quake 3 and, and Unreal Tournament 99, you know, I didn't sit there thinking like, oh god, I need a skin to play these, you know, I need skin progression to a skin progression layer to enjoy these games, but for whatever reason, it just kind of feels like there's something missing when there's like nothing to unlock and at the same time in arena shooters, there's not like a vertical power structure and I don't know, it's it's interesting to think about, which is why they, they tried to make Quake Champions, which is basically like Quake Overwatch. And that game never came to consoles. So I never really experienced it. And now it's basically dead from what yeah. it, from what I understand. So I don't know. I, I think Quake could work with a multiplayer and I hope they give it a try in some way. But at the same time, I keep thinking like, can arena shooters even work? And I think like part of the struggle Halo Infinite's having is that everyone's just on that Battle Royale trend now. Yeah, well, the other thing uh, I was thinking, like, it would it even make a multiplayer for Quake? I mean, they dropped it for Doom Eternal for a reason. So it's like, if they do... If they are really doing Quake, would they just have somebody else make the multiplayer? If they even are doing one? I, I guess we'll eventually find out what their project is. Um, that makes sense to me if someone else is doing it, but you also have to remember, like, Third party developers are in high demand yeah, right they now sure are. for like support studios. But maybe like maybe they could have support internally, like from like Roundhouse or something. Because we don't know what they're working on. No, but. we don't. Uh thank you to Ronnie Kennedy for becoming the newest member of the channel. Appreciate the uh support and enjoy all the great emojis. Uh LA Chargers fan says when I play Forza, I find myself hoping I could get off and walk around. I hope that is what Fable is. I trust Playground and know it will be quality. Yeah, I'm. I'm I trust Playground as well. So I, I think they're one of the best developers out there. Um, Mariano P says, "Do you expect anything with regards to Halo BR at the showcase, or is this ten to twelve months out?" Hmm. Yeah, there isn't there like. Didn't someone put a rumor out that Halo might not even be at the show? I don't or think was, so. Am I imagining things? I mean, that's what we said on Defining Duke on Wednesday. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, that was us. That was your <laughs> prediction, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. All... <laughs> that was us. God, I really am hungover. <laughs> you, you really are hungover. <laughs> oh, that, man, so that's I'm that's sorry, a, that's but... a little that's a little taste for our predictions. Both me and Jez, yeah. both me and Jez think. That 343 is going to skip the showcase. Yeah. There's a I think there's a good chance they will. But so, we'll we'll talk about that some more. Halo Infinite is gonna skip the showcase. Maybe 343 is there with something else, eh? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. A surprise, perhaps. Anyways. Perhaps. Andy Hart has been a member for five months, says, Hey Rand Jazz, is it concerning no God of War Ragnarok shown in yesterday's state of play? I don't think so. I mean, they said it was going to be third parties and VR only. So first party stuff wasn't going to show up, even though, even though Sony made some of the fanboys cry, which was so amazing to see. Uh, we'll t- <laughs> we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about that. But um, no, I think even when we were talking about state of play last week, I said, I, don't go in thinking God of War is going to be there. Um, more than likely what you'll either see is, at Jeff Keighley's show on the 9th, you could see a new trailer from God of War with the release date. If Sony really kind of wants to get that, you know, mainstream eyes on Jeff Keighley's show, it would be a good place to maybe announce the release date with the trailer. And then have like a God of War, uh, you know, uh, stay to play sometime in the future. I mean, 
you don't really need that many months of marketing build up to release a game, especially one as big as God of War. It's just going to come out and it's just going to be huge. So I think at some point this month, you'll probably get the announcement that it's coming out. I think late September. And then I would not be shocked if Forspoken gets delayed to next year because of it. Cause Forspoken's like October 12th and God of War probably if it's coming out this year is like late September, early October. I, I, I think they move Forspoken out of the way like immediately. So I don't, I don't think it's cause for concern. Uh, what else we got? Um, Johnny Mercado says mommy milkers. Hmm. <laughs> And Ronnie Kennedy... Oh, man. Man's been playing Resident Evil Village too much. Mm. Ronnie Kennedy says, My prediction <laughs> is that Xbox Creation Labs will be updated to let you customize Elite controllers. Which is interesting because ah. they took the website down and I sent that to Jazz. I'm like, what do you think we're getting? What do you think we're going to get here? You think there's going to be something announced at the showcase where it's going to be, you know, customize Elite Series 2 or new Series 3? But essentially what the announcement was... Is that they're um, they new have uh, like the new colors in support of um, what L Pride? Yeah, the, a Pride Month essentially. So and, yeah. and they'll they go back they go on sale like June 9th. Um, so yeah, I think that's what it is. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if like customizing the Elite controllers would be cool, but maybe there's just too much involved with that potentially. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the, the elite controller has too many moving parts, and frankly, they have enough manufacturing issues with elite controllers as it is without throwing in that aspect of it. But could be wrong. I think I, it would be cool someday to have customizable elite controllers. I actually have a customized Gen One elite controller with a Twin Peaks theme that's red with the with the the chevron pattern. And it looks amazing, but then, but then the rubber grips fell off because that's what happened with the first Gen Elite controller. Man, I just, I just really want to see one of my, one of my desires ran for the E3 showcase, and I'm calling it E3 showcase. I don't care; it's, it's E3 in my head. Okay. Um, m- one of my desires is a new Elite controller that maybe has a a refined manufacturing process that results in less points of failure. I don't know. Um. Huh. Because that's I, the I love dream, mine, but it, it broke. I mean, an elite series controller that doesn't break on you. Oh, that's the dream, bro. That's just, that, that's is that, that even is possible? the dream. Is that possible? I don't know, man. I don't know if we have the technology yet. We can put a man in the moon, but we can't build an elite controller that doesn't break. Mm. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bookster nineteen nineteen in super chat says, "Shout out to my friends Rep and Fletch who are." L's lol and uh wolf of iowa who says gauntlet <laughs> the very dark... nice <laughs> yeah gauntlet the dark legacy remake xbox exclusive so Ooh. i guess when we're talking about the elite here do you think we'll see an elite announcement at the showcase or do you think the game showcase isn't just going to be exactly what it is a game showcase now they haven't come out like aaron greenberg would normally come out and be like hey he's done this a couple times where he sets expectations and is like no business at the show or, you know, it's just it's strictly games. Do you think this is just strictly games? Dude, Snowbike yeah, Mike, I think this the, is... the host of the uh, Kind of Funny X-Cast in the chat, loves Snowbike Mike. He I says he's Mike. on his fifth Xbox Elite controller. Because oh, the sh- yeah. shoulder buttons man, keep I've... on breaking, so... Yeah. I keep hearing those stories that where people are like, yeah, I keep having to get mine replaced and stuff like that. My sh- The shoulder buttons are broken on mine too, you know, and I can't get it replaced because it's out of warranty now. So I'm just sort of screwed. With Could you a, imagine going controller. through five of those things? They like cost 150 yeah. bucks. Like I, I mine yeah. broke my, I well, just, just ugh. Microsoft will replace them like up until the warranty runs out. So just think how, how much Microsoft spending to replace those controllers. I'm thinking of how like, much it's, Mike it's, is spending. It's wild. <laughs> That's more than but, the cost you know, of a console. Got, you know, it's got the, it's got those YouTube millions like you, man. So mm. it's got that kind of funny no. millions. <laughs> um, and, uh, I don't know. 
So my, yeah, it's funny because my my 2013 Xbox controller that has like the day one edition Xbox One controller that still works, you know. And I've I've used that so damn much that the uh, the the rubber on the th- the thumbsticks has worn away, but the controller itself still works. Why can't they get the Elite controllers right? It's so strange to me, but I'm not an engineer, so I don't know. So let's talk about uh, I'm going to talk about the Xbox Series S here for a minute, Jez. Because oh, why is that, Rand? Why is that? It, it's interesting the the reaction to the consoles from the the announcement to now, where you know people were like essentially saying nobody wants the console. You know, people were taking pictures of the Series S on store shelves, being being like, you know. It's only selling because it's these. available. Nobody wants these. Look at this stuff. And, you know, Xbox is selling better than it ever has before, better than the 360, better than the Xbox One. But the the jab people throw is that, oh, well, you know, it's only because it's available. Like, like, like well, mm. that's what you want. You want a product to be available. Like, I don't, I, I don't know how that's, like, a bad thing to say. <laughs> so it, it goes from, yeah. like, number one, it goes from, People are going to be confused about the naming of these systems. Uh, the Xbox Series S, people are just going to confuse that for the Xbox One S. And they'll, they'll buy the wrong console to, oh, the Series S is going to hold back the entire generation. Devs are going to skip Xbox to nobody wants this console to, you know, there are only people, only people want them because they're on store shelves to, you can't. You can't count those sales together. Stop the count. <laughs> That's not fair. It's not fair to PlayStation. It's not fair. They should be totally separate. Uh, I don't. <laughs> what so do you weird. What do you think about all that? About uh, the fact that you have the Series S doing well, exactly ex- what Microsoft probably envisioned. But then people being yeah. like, "You can't count them together." That's that's just unfair to the competition. I think like if you can't count um, Xbox Series S sales uh, in in you know in bundled with uh, Xbox Series X, well then you have to count the Xbox Series X sales that are going into Microsoft server racks for XCloud, because everyone playing on XCloud, all the the thousands of people that are playing Fortnite on XCloud right now, and I've been told that Fortnite being on XCloud has led to double digit growth for the service all those people are playing on xbox series x right now so they are in my view xbox series x gamers so we need to count those users in xbox series x sales if we can't bundle xbox series s sales no do you think that's fair Mm. or am i crazy i mean i don't know i always kind of wait for the next Um, narrative to pop up you know there's a lot of damn narratives rent there there are there are a lot of damn narratives out there a lot of them you know I, I don't have a Series S. Do you, you, do you have a Series S? I had one because, do you remember when I when I went back to Germany after the pandemic? Because I got stuck in England when they, they closed the borders. I was visiting family and then the pandemic happened. And I was like, oh, well, it, it won't be for very long. And then it was, it was very, very long. <laughs> so I got stuck in England and... Um, uh, oh no, actually, I'm, I'm doing it the other way around. I got stuck in England, so I had my when it came to getting the Series X review unit, um, I had it, I had it sent to England, and um, and then when I went back to Germany, I didn't want to, I didn't want to take my Series X in the luggage in case something bad happened. So I thought, well, I'll just get a series, a Series S while I wait for the Series X to become available in Germany, and of course. It never really did. <laughs> I, could, I still can't find them in stock even now. Um, so I did have a Series S as my main console in Germany for a really long time. Like a good, maybe like a year or so, or at least half a year. Um, well, it was like more than half a year. It was, good. it was like eight, nine, maybe ten months. I had a Series S as my main console in Germany. And um, it was fine. You know, I like, I never felt like I was like, there was, there was a couple of times where I was really irritated by the Series S, 
But a patch a few weeks after launch pretty much solved that. I think I talked about before how Chivalry, mm -hmm. when Chivalry came out, I was really hyped on Chivalry and it was really awesome. But it was only 30 frames per second on the Series S. And I was really annoyed about that. And then like a couple of weeks later, it gets patched and then it's 60 frames and that's fine. So for me, this, the pitfall with the Series S is when the games aren't 60 frames. But as long as they're 60 frames, it's all good. Because I ain't about that filmic life anymore, Rand. I know. I remember, I remember you were all about that filmic life. 30 frames forever. Are, are you, yeah. I mean, it just... Yeah. It, 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 I, it's, the, the saying has never been truer. Ignorance is bliss. You were happy with 30 <laughs> frames because you didn't know what 60 frames is. And then you finally got 60 and you're like, I can't go back. I can't go back. I don't understand how people can like play Spider-Man Miles Morales or any game that has a performance mode, right? And when you can actually switch them on the fly and think that the 30 frames mode is worth playing over the 60 frames mode. Like to me, when I flip back and forth, it's like a freaking slideshow. It is unplayable when I go from 60 to 30. I, I, yeah. I can't stomach it anymore. And sure, okay, I'm a console gamer. I, I'm used to 30 frames. been 30 frames, you know, 360 Xbox One most of the time. But, like, when you when you get a situation where most of your games are now 60, and it's like, all right, I'm going to flip back to 30, it's very noticeable, and it's absolutely horrible. But then people are like, oh, well, I want that sweet 4K in ray tracing. But it's like, no, man. I need the performance all the time. <laughs> I need that silky smooth frame rate over ray tracing and the 4K. You know, it's like, okay, then, then you know, then people will be like, well, you bought an expensive TV for all that and you want to play in 1080p 60 or whatever. It's like, well, no, I also bought the TV because it can also do 120 hertz. So, you know, I, 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 want, I want performance in my games. You know, yeah, I want them to look pretty too. But if I'm choosing one or the other, it's 60 frames all day, every day. Over, I think the only 30 frames game I played this whole gen so far has been the medium. Uh, that game was 30 frames. I mean, maybe it doesn't necessarily need 60 because it's your favorite type of game, a walking simulator, uh, puzzle solver. But yeah, for everything else, it's like performance mode is on immediately. And then when if a if a you know game offers 120 frames, I'm choosing that too because so smooth and that's exactly what I want. Um, Andy Hart in the super chat says, "Do we have a time release for the Xbox show? Um, it is sat. It is Sunday, the twelfth at ten a.m. Pacific. So that's uh twelve Central, one p.m. Eastern, uh, here in the states. And Scott Wood Woodford says, my Elite Two hasn't broken, and he's had it since day one. Yeah, I'm not everybody's. You know, that's lucky. Not everybody's. I think that might have like... gonna break. So, yeah." They might have revised some of the the development stuff uh, with that controller. Hopefully, maybe the maybe the newer models are a bit better, but definitely the launch models had issues with the shoulder buttons. But I don't know. They, another problem with the Elite controllers is that they're hard to rep they're harder to repair. Like when my standard Xbox controllers were broken a few times, I've took them apart and repaired them. Like they're not hard to repair, but the Elite controllers are a little bit. Ooh, I don't know if I want to take that apart. That's a bit spooky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. We almost have uh, 1,700 people watching. Thank you guys for being here on this Friday. If you do us a big favor, make sure you hit the like button if you're enjoying the show. So we can get over like 700 before it ends. 700, 1,700 people, Jez. That's uh, quite a lot. It's That's quite, amazing. It's quite a lot. Uh, Viper XT says, Fanboys want the Series S and X counted separately, but they're quick to continue... They're quick to combine all the PS Plus tiers together. Hashtag fitting the narrative. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Sony State of Play because they announced a lot of Xbox games at the show. And I, I thought it for a State of Play, you know, because State of Plays are usually of lesser quality. Um I mean, I thought they delivered exactly what they said they were going to do. Third-party games and VR announcements. Uh, I didn't care about any of the VR stuff because I don't care about VR. And um, Damn. So I thought the show was delivered exactly what they said it was going to do. So I, on that aspect, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, when you start off a show with 
a brand new announcement as big as Resident Evil, and then you also have Street Fighter VI, and you have Final Fantasy XVI. People are going to like that show because people want big AAA announcements. The reason why people normally clown state of play shows is because they usually mostly only show like indie games and people really don't care for indie games in their announcements showcases you know what i mean so you actually watched some of these trailers what 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 are your thoughts about uh well just what are your thoughts about resident evil 4 man I thought it like they didn't really show much sort of in they didn't show much action. So it was kind of like it was very much sort of like a a sort of tone setting in engine sort of piece. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the first Hellblade trailer where it's sort of like, yeah, this is kind of what the engine looks like. Because this is the tone we're going for. These are sort of the the hints at the changes we're making in Resident Evil. I'm a huge Resident Evil fanboy. Like I'm just a Capcom fanboy in general. I absolutely love Capcom. The, the last few years, they've just been killing it. They've been nailing it. Capcom has been doing basically no wrong for for years now, and it's so amazing to feel like Capcom is on this sort of, I don't know, this sort of quality uprising that we haven't seen from them for like there was there was there was a dark time for Capcom where like they just had flop after flop after flop, and now they're just sort of smacking it on all cylinders, and it's great to see. So, I thought it looked pretty damn good. It was really cool seeing it, like, on the RE engine, which is an amazing engine. Some of the best visuals, I think, um, visuals to performance ratio out there. So, it's uh, I, I thought it looked great. You know, I'm really eager to see more. I want to see combat now, and I want to see, like, how else they're going to change it. I want to find out, like, you know, are they going to sort of... Like, because Resident Evil, the Resident Evil 1 remake, that that really did quite change a lot. You know, it changed the lore. It changed a lot of the gameplay aspects and stuff. So I kind of want to know how far they're going to go to sort of change the game and stuff from the original. But I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. What did you think? I mean, I'm a big fan of Resident Evil 4. Like, if you... If I've always rated my Resident Evil games like the first time I played through them was like Resident Evil 2 was my favorite and then Resident Evil 4 was my second favorite. So I was so stoked when they remade Resident Evil 2. Freaking loved that game. And I even really enjoyed the Resident Evil 3 remake even though it wasn't nearly as good as the second one. I've always been of the opinion it's like do we really need a remake of Resident Evil 4? Like I get why we needed one for 2 and 3. Right? But it's like does 4 need a remake? And after seeing that trailer, I was like, I don't care. Give me that remake. <laughs> like, I'm like, I want to play, I want to well, play dude. this, you know, like I just, I just, I just want to play Resident Evil 4. Um, and it's coming soon too. I mean, well, relatively speaking early next year, March, man, it's going to be a horror, horror lovers dream. Cause you got dead space. Com- you got Kalisto project coming in December, which we'll talk about in a minute. You got dead space remake coming in January. And then you got Resident Evil 4 coming in March. So I think that's yeah. fantastic. We It seems like 2023 is shaping up to be a pretty good year so far. Seems like we're finally yeah, coming out of the whole pandemic affecting game development. You know, it's like games are going to start coming out, dropping, you know, cross-gen stuff. So Because I believe Resident Evil 4 is next-gen only, correct? I think it was. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I did I do think that's the way it's going, yeah. So yeah, we're both excited for that and it's uh it's multi platform, so it's it's great to see. Uh we got the super chat here from Daswell who says, Good evening, Lance. So Final Fantasy Seven remake is no longer listed as an exclusive in the PS store. Talk to me, give me hope. Yeah, so that's actually a topic <laughs> I have here. Final Fantasy VII Remake coming to Xbox question mark, exclamation point. And I don't know if 10K is listening to me in the Xbox Air Discord, but both me and you previously have said, you know, when the one-year exclusivity was up, both me and you said, it's not coming. Not this year. Sony extended the exclusivity. It didn't come. Even though uh, they released Intergrade, for the PS5 as well as for the Epic Game Store, it didn't come to Xbox. Oh, weird. 
right? Now we're two years. We're two years into it. We know that there's supposed to be some Final Fantasy VII remake news in June, uh, according to, I think, the producer of the game. Uh, I'm not sure of his name. I think he said that last month. Uh, Some people were expecting the trailer for Remake 2 to be at the Sony State of Play, but it wasn't there. So now, people that discovered that if you go to PlayStation Storefront, that uh, they have a listing of, you know, exclusives that you can that you can get. And Final Fantasy VII Remake has been listed there, but as of like a week ago, well, it got removed. So it's no longer listed as a console exclusive. Leading people to have speculation and hope that it's finally time. It's finally time. And I'm going to say this before I give my my prediction. If Final Fantasy VII Remake does not show up at Xbox's game showcase this Sunday or next Sunday, it is never going to come to Xbox. And Remake 2 will never come and Remake 3 will never come. If it's not there this Sunday or this June 12th, it will never come. And I've been of the opinion for a long time that it's never going to come because I sort of feel like Sony is giving the money to Square to kind of make Cloud like Cloud Strife like a PlayStation character. You know, they got those banners where they have the characters from each one of the games and they put them together. So you have like Nathan Drake and, you know, um, uh, Kratos, right? Or, you know, uh, Ellie from Last of Us. You know, those character posters that they always do. Yeah. Like, I kind of feel they want Final Fantasy so tightly associated with PlayStation that they're just paying this huge amounts of money to keep the game off Xbox. So, with mm. all that said, I'm going to go bold, Jez. Oh, Ron's I'm gonna going to go bold. bold. Let's hear it. And even though I've, even though I've been, been cautioning, you know, cautioning people to keep your expectations low about Final Fantasy VII Remake... Expect it not to show up, and if it does, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You know, because that's what both me and you said about Street Fighter VI, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, don't expect it to come, and if it does, awesome, amazing, it's a big surprise, everybody's happy. I'm going to say Final Fantasy VII Remake is a surprise announcement at the showcase. Not only is it coming to Xbox, uh. it's coming to Game Pass on day one, and it's launching that day. On June twelfth, you'll be able to play Final Fantasy VII Remake on Xbox through Game Pass Day One. I really like that announcement for a few reasons. A, um, it means that you know Microsoft and Square Enix have perhaps worked out their differences, and B, it means I get to play it on the cloud, where all games should be now, as you know, cloud cloud's future, man. I don't know if you I don't know if you're aware of this. Clouds of Future. But then you sort of get like, it's sort of like, it cuts through that whole idea that we'll never get Final Fantasy on Xbox, right? Because that means if we game Final Fantasy 7, which is the game that Sony kind of wants to, like you say, they want people to think cloud, think of cloud as a PlayStation character, you know? Like, if they can get Final Fantasy 7 Remake, that probably means Final Fantasy 16 is probably down the, down the line as well. And, um, I kind of feel like I'm kind of with you that I think it will eventually come because the fact that it was on the Epic Game Store, which is basically if you if you put a game exclusively in the Epic Game Store, the only reason you're doing that is for money because nobody uses the Epic Game Store. Literally nobody. You know, you log on to get your free game and you you uninstall that shit. You know, uh, that's people just want it on Steam. So the the idea of Final Fantasy VII remake never coming to Steam. That just doesn't scan. So, like, at that point, it's kind of like, well, they're just waiting for deals to expire. I think you're right. I think it will come to Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, to Xbox. I do think Final Fantasy VII Remake will come. But do I think it's going to come day one in Game Pass and launch at the show? I don't know, man. You got to go big. You got to go big, Jez. Go big or go home. Go big or go home, bro. That would be, that would be a sort of... That would be that would make up for the the lengthy exclusivity period, but man, that that is a sort of that would be huge if they did that. So 
I, I don't know if I want to be that optimistic about it. Hey, I'm, I'm going bold with my prediction. I hope you're right, baby. I'm going, I'm going bold, man. Is this, you know? is this one of your prediction, no, not, not no, I don't know anything happening at the show. I, I literally <laughs> know nothing. Last two years, I knew uh, quite Look, a bit. Ryan, that is, dude, that is so specific. No, it's you not. turn out to be right. Dude, if you turn out to be correct, the okay. Final Fantasy VII Remake is launching on Xbox and into Game Pass and launching during the show, that is so specific. That the only way you could know that is if A, you already know, or B, you are literally clairvoyant. I'm f- in this case, it would be literally clairvoyant then. So, are we going to start having to call you Randall clairvoyant? No. After the show? I mean, I used to go by Rand- Randall Nostradamus or, Rand- you know. Really? Randstradamus, <laughs> you know what I mean? Ran Ran Stradamus. Okay. Well, uh for for Xbox fan sake, I hope that your psychic prediction comes comes to fruition. I mean Oh man. I think I think it'd be great if it just came to the platform, even though it's two years old. I see some people in chat being like, This is not a big announcement, it's two years old. You know what I think Xbox would think this is a big announcement because sometimes what we think is a is a big announcement and what Xbox thinks is a big announcement, sometimes they aren't like we just, you know, they think they. I think Xbox would think, "Oh man, we got Final Fantasy VII. Oh, we got it on Game Pass Day One. That's huge." Or a lot of other people would think, "Eh, well, who cares? It's a two-year-old game." But you know, and again, I I reviewed Final Fantasy VII Remake on PlayStation. It's the only PlayStation game I've ever reviewed, and I had to review it around because I'm a huge play- Final Fantasy VII fanboy. Mm. So like, it's the only PlayStation game I've ever reviewed on playstation and um i even though i hate the ending i think everyone knows that i hate the ending i would play through it again because the the base game is incredibly fun like the combat is really great and the sort of up until the end i even enjoyed the story tweaks that they did um the the scene the scene with uh in the war market with cloud in uh the honeybee inn is honestly one of the greatest scenes in video game history. It is hilarious and amazing, and they totally nailed it. But yeah, I would play through it again if it comes to Xbox, and I play through it on cloud because that's where I play games now. Yeah, right? that's I only play games. No on, I'm a phone gamer now, man. No installs. I'm Andy a phone Hart. Yeah. The super chat says, "Would love an outrun remake, an arcade classic." Thoughts, please. I think it would be a huge seller. I mean. Outrun's cool. I just sort of feel that they don't they're not really making a lot of racers anymore. Uh mainly because I think like it's kind of been centralized. Codemasters does it. You know, EA doesn't even really do remember when Need for Speed was one of the best selling games out there and now it takes yeah. Need for Speed barely has a game every other year. I think it's just like Forza the type of racing game that's popular isn't really like what outrun would be you know like you don't even see what the burnout games like? what was outrun like exactly like an arcade ar- arcade uh racer you yeah. know you ever play it uh yeah. i mean it's been a long time since i played it but i don't know it's just i i, I sort of feel like the racing genre when you go and look at like the 360 gen, you had a lot of, um, you had the burnout games, you had split second, right? You had blur, which were kind of car destruction games. And I, I think the industry moved away from those mainly because like though, like you couldn't license those cars because the manufacturers didn't want those cars getting totaled and gamers didn't want to play drive with, you know, they didn't want to drive cars that essentially weren't real so they gravitated towards, you know, games that had licensed cars and because the industry stopped making the burnout style games, it's too much of a risk now to actually go and be like to a publisher and be like, we want to make a burnout style outrun style, um, experience. And because there are no examples you could point to, the publisher thinks it's risky where you could point to Forza Horizon yeah or Gran Turismo 7, and know there's actually an audience out there that supports sim racers, and that supports an open world racer, 
right? Whereas, like, the Burnout style games, there's no evidence to a publisher that that game would be supported. So they're a little bit more hesitant to to make those. You know what I mean? Mm. At yeah, least I get you. In, in my, right. At least in my brain. I don't know. Uh, Francisco. They, EA invested heavily in race. They bought Codemasters they did. specifically because they wanted to invest in racing games. So They did, but like the racing Ooh. games Codemasters makes are Sim Racers, which we know has an audience, right? And also Arcade Racers, yeah. arcade racers which we know ha- there is an audience. So I'm just saying like it's a shame that stuff like Split Second and Blur and Burnout don't exist anymore and the publishers don't want to support make those because they don't know if the audience for those games exist. So uh yeah. Francisco says, "Hi. Uh that shit must have hurt to all those PlayStation fans, but remember I didn't say anything. I'm all consoles player, I need a PC." Uh, Alvin says June 10th is the one year anniversary of Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade. Is that? So Jazz, he's saying that the one year anniversary for Final Fantasy VII Remake is the 10th and the show's on the 12th. That means the one year exclusivity could be up. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I want to believe, man. I want to believe. I haven't actually played Integrade either. So like that'll be a new experience for me. Um, you know, experiencing the extra stuff they added and stuff. So, I hope it's true, man. And I, ho- I hope you're right. I want to play that. That is a game perfect for cloud because it doesn't need the most responsive, uh, you know, reactions. But I say that, but X Cloud is like X Cloud is super responsive lately. I don't know if there's been even more upgrades, but I've been playing Scarlet Nexus, which is like a hack and slash, and I played it entirely on cloud. And it's become so good that I just don't even notice that it's cloud anymore. Mm. 1080p60 on, on my laptop. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, why did I buy this two two $2,000 laptop when, you know, I don't, I'm not even using the GPU because I'm just playing everything from the cloud. Oh, man. It's a, what a weird time for gaming. But I like it. Uh, Raj Patel it. says, hey, guys, do you think we'll see an Elite Controller Series 3 this year or next? I mm. think next year as the earliest. Yeah, I think next year too. Yeah. They're not going to announce any hardware at this show. I mean, they pretty much came out and said that. This is going to be all gameplay focused. There's not going to be any hardware announcements. There's not going to be any Keystone announcement, Um, you know, uh, streaming console announcement or anything like that. This is going to be pure gameplay. I think if they did do some, some like smaller accessories announcements, like maybe they got a new headset or something like that, um, just imagining... They'd probably do that as sort of announce it on the side or whatever. But this is just going to be straight gameplay. Yeah. And um, I want to believe they're making a new Elite controller because, you know, as we were talking about earlier, the Elite controller Series 2 has got some you issues. Know, so. You need that Elite controller that has that haptic feedback on the grips. That's that's. I'm gonna. I'm sticking with that until <laughs> I'm proven wrong. That's gonna be the big focus for the Elite Series Three. I don't care if it doesn't make a lot of sense because who's gonna use it? Who's gonna dev for that when the regular controllers don't have it? I'm gonna say they're gonna use that as a selling point, and they're gonna be able to say this is why this controller is two hundred dollars and why we can justify making a Series Three. I'm gonna keep on saying that until I'm proven wrong. Yeah, I mean, you might be right. Um, I personally think this might be one of Rand's predictions, not predictions again. But I mean, yeah. this whole show is going to be just predictions, are... predictions, because I don't know. I, I'm being very upfront here. I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> you said that before, though, about about the the haptic stuff coming to the series three. I'm going to keep on saying that until they announce the series three and there's no haptics, because I think that's what they're going to okay. use to sell the con- sell sell the uh, controller. Uh, okay. Elvin Gully says, "Forget Final Fantasy VII remake." They ruined the combat to appeal to modern fans. I want 14 and 16 on Xbox. I have it on PC, but I want it on my big screen. Fair enough. Yeah, I know a lot of people that do want Final Fantasy 14, and I think 16 is a timed exclusive, I think, maybe. Uh, I'm sure chat will yeah, I correct me if I'm wrong. Two years, presumably, just like Forspoken is. Uh, Adam says, Sega reportedly wants to make a lot of remakes and remasters of their IP. Can you two make top five you want to see, and will one of them be at the show? Sega. What does Sega have? 
See, like, Lord Cognito is like a huge Sega fan, and he'd be able to, like, list you, like, oh, well, Sega's got this, 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 and this. What does Sega have that I would want them to bring back? Jazz, what do they got? What does Sega got? What's Sega, oh. Sega franchises? I'm trying to think. Here's one. Here's one. What? Alpha Protocol. Ooh. Ooh. And I, I like and Alpha know, Protocol. Hmm. I did notice Obsidian tweeting about Alpha Protocol's did, like fifty yeah. year anniversary the other day. You know, I I would uh I would love to see an Alpha Protocol come back. Probably unrealistic. I, I think I think they should do it. Like Alpha Protocol was so unique. The only issue with Alpha Protocol really was that they didn't give it enough time to bake and fix the issues that the game had. You know, it was a really cool concept. It was like spy Mass Effect, basically. And I I want that in my life. I think that would work really well. And, mm. you know, providing that you actually make it polished and stuff. But, yeah. I got I mean, that's one, one game. I'm I look- mean, Sega's hard to think about. I'm looking at all the Sega video game franchises. And okay. Condemned. Oh yeah, by Monolith condemned. Productions. Especially, oh my God, you know, remember how, like, how amazing the first Condemned was? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. God, I would love for that to come back. Whether it's like a remake, especially or a with game. the horror renaissance going on right now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. Like I mean, Dead Space, Resident Evil, and then you've whack Condemned in there. I think, but it's interesting though because didn't Sega publish the Alien game, Alien, Alien Isolation, Isolation which or was- am I? Just yeah, they did. It was great. Fantastic. And they never game. they never bothered making a follow up. No, because I don't think it sold very well, unfortunately. And I think Creative Assembly So maybe that puts Sega off. Potentially. I mean, we know they're remaking or having a new Jet Set Radio and a new uh Crazy Taxi. People have wanted that. Uh I'm just looking through the rest of this stuff and it's just I saw Condemned. Um Outrun, which somebody asked for. Panzer Dragoon. I'm a you know big fan. Oh, we got Persona here. Persona is that? All right, Jez. Bold prediction. Sidebar. Are we gonna see a Persona game announced for Xbox at the showcase? Man, I want to believe because Persona's again. It's one of those Remember, games Jez, I really want to see on Xbox. Jez, no waffling. Yes. No, I don't know. Yes or no's. Come on, you you gotta be firm. Are you? What are you writing well, your, dude, your, your pick, prediction for people, your for Windows Central? By the way, I'm writing it after Monday. Okay, so give me so give me a yes or no's. Any any websites listening to this? This isn't you know. Jez says yes, we're gonna see it. Doesn't mean that it's actually happening. It's just these are just our thoughts, our predictions. Just 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 put your foot down, Jez. Yes or no? No waffling. Man. No maybes. No, I don't knows. I can't. What? Can, can I just waffle a little bit? No, there's no. You need to be firm. It's either a yes or a no. Dude, some web some website's gonna be like, oh, James Corden says Persona's coming. If I if I try and make this kind of prediction, you know it. <laughs> I know. But I'm gonna say no. Okay, you're gonna say no. I don't think I don't think we'll see Persona at the show. I think like I think there's like some kind of cultural issue that Microsoft needs to cut through. There's too many devs that sort of think feel like Xbox just doesn't exist. So I'm gonna be pessimistic and say no. I mean, would you would you agree with that? Or not? Um I'll agree with you. I'll I'll say no as well. Now do you do you say no because you hope you're wrong and then you could be like Look, I was wrong, and there's Persona Four Golden or whatever. Well, that that's that's like some something that I often do is like I predict the negative to try and mm. spite myself to get what I want. <laughs> I I think I need therapy, but um, but yeah, I really want I really just want it. I really want Persona on cloud. I really want to play Persona Four and Five. The last Persona game I played was Persona Three. On like, I think I, I don't. I think I might have even played that on an emulator back in the day. I don't know, but yeah, I've I've missed out on Persona Four and I missed out on Persona Five, and it'd be great to sort of jump into those games, even if they just like you know, um, even if they just bought Persona Three and Four, like that'd be something to to get started with at least. 
like since I since I played Ayudan Chronicle, I've sort of been on this JRPG kick, which is why I went. I've I've gone back and uh, you know d- diving through the backlog. I'm playing Scarlet Nexus. After I'm done with Scarlet Nexus, I'm going to play Tales of Arise because I never finished that either. And um, Persona and Final Fantasy Seven would be a you know it'd be a message to Xbox fans who are sort of sick of not getting all of these sort of JRPGs that you know we want that we just don't get you know so i want to believe but i kind of don't rip jeez you're just ripping everyone's hearts out jazz uh yeah that's what i do man jd gamer says sega rally championship was awesome uh elvin gully says bring back project gotham racing yeah a lot of people want project gotham racing i actually i remember i asked that to phil at one point back in like 2015 and he what pretty much say? he pretty much said like, there's no reason to have three racing franchises. It was like if because Forza Horizon and Forza Motorsport, it was, it was just there was just like kind of no point. And yeah. I because I think also like the devs who made Project Gotham Racing are the, the ones who formed Playground Games in the first place. So after this after Project, Bizarre Project closed, Gotham, it's nothing to do with. Batman is it? No, no, no. It has nothing to do what? You thought Project Gotham Racing had something to do with Batman? Gotham? Tell me you're kidding me. Tell me you're just you're you're just you're just uh, doing that for the lulls. Well why is it called Project Gotham if it's nothing to do with Batman? I don't know. But it has nothing to do with Batman. <laughs> So you can't like race the Batmobile and shit. I thought it was. I thought that's what it. Was, I thought it was like like that. I thought it was a Batman themed racing game. Jesus, no, Jez. <laughs> I was. I was about to say they could do a Project Gotham DLC for Forza where you can race as the Batmobile and shit. I, I don't know. <laughs> so it's not, you're telling me Project Gotham has nothing to do with Batman? No, I'm telling you, Project Gotham has nothing to do with Batman. I thought it was a Batman racing game. But now, now I kind of want a Batman racing game. Yeah. Like, I, I, well, if you want a Batman watched, racing game, ba- uh, play Batman Arkham Knight. Well, I was playing like... I, I watched the, the Batman with my brother the other day, and I was just thinking about how great the car chase scene is in that movie. That'd be cool, man. Project Gotham, Batman racing game. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, why is it called Gotham, then? It just It's just a name. It has nothing to do... You know, Gotham's been a word long before Batman. I thought Batman invented Gotham. No. Uh, JD Gamer says, uh, speaking of hardware, when do you think Xbox will finally do VR? 2023, 2024, or beyond? And do you see a haptic refresh of the Xbox controller? Well, one, I said I thought the haptic refresh would be in the Elite Series 3. Uh, As for Xbox doing VR, I'm going to say no. (laughs) I don't think Xbox is doing VR anytime soon. If at all, ever. Yeah, Xbox is Xbox has no interest in VR. There's like the systemic issues that VR needs to solve before that becomes a thing. So don't expect to see Xbox doing VR anytime soon. That's the realm of your old pal's fail book for now. Mm. Uh, JD Gamer says Sega has Panzer Dragoon series, especially Saga, Shining Force, Fantasy Star, Virtual Fighter. Fighters, Mega Mix, Virtua Tennis, Knights, and Persona. Yeah, they do, and none of those really mean anything to me. So, unfortunately, sorry. Damn. Uh, Supernova right says here ruining people's lives. I'm just, I'm just being truthful, bro. I just, you know, I, none of those mean anything <laughs> to me. I'm sorry. Just like, just like Nintendo's franchises mean nothing to me. Like people are like, bro, Zelda, oh, Pokemon. You know, uh, Mario. Like I don't, I don't. Those franchises is that, is that mean Miles? nothing. Miles that's my, that's when Miles talks <laughs> to me about that stuff. That's what I imagine. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm sorry. Like those things, those franchises mean literally nothing to me. Like yeah, I know what Zelda is, Damn. but like it means literally nothing to me. Bro, did you see the new Zelda game? The timeline and Ganon. They're correcting it. I don't care. Zelda means nothing. <laughs> Is that is that actually happening? I, I don't know. I've I, I've heard that like the the timeline in these Zelda games are like apparently crazy and nuts. 
I don't know, but I don't know. Uh, Supernova know says <laughs> new can get new condemn game by Kojima. Let's go. Hashtag mayonnaise 2024. I want a condemn game. <laughs> Lucius Augusta says we need a cart racer. Cart racer four is a cart. Yeah, with after the acquisition goes down, the Activision acquisition goes down. You know, Microsoft could have a lot have a cart racer. I remember when I thought oh, they were yeah, doing sure. a cart racer and ended up being like Forza Street. Cuz we had heard we had heard that there was like another Forza game or something and then it ended up being like that mobile Forza Street game and I was just like what is this? <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, Flame says it's okay, Jez. I've always thought the same. So I guess you're not you're the only you're not the only one thinking that Gotham it had something to do with uh, you know. Well, I Batman. if it's just the racing game, I don't I don't get why people want it because isn't it's just isn't Forza like the successor to it? I don't know. I thought people wanted it because they wanted to race as the Batmobile. Well, that sounds cool to me. I mean, it is. I want to race cool. as the Batmobile. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Sosa says, do you think we see any, any ABK games as third party? So Activision at the showcase jazz, like I know people think that modern warfare is going to be there, but it's not, it's getting this reveal next week though. They announced that, uh, I think it's getting its reveal on June 8th. Uh, I'm really excited for modern warfare too. Cause modern warfare 2019 was pretty damn awesome. Plus, I'm really looking forward to Warzone 2. Uh, you know, as you guys know, I'm a Battle Royale kind of guy. So I don't think Modern Warfare 2 is going to be at the showcase. I don't think there's any chance it no. comes to Game Pass on day one at the end of the year. Um, but I do think... Me Sony who- still has the marketing for it. Yes, yeah, Sony's got the marketing I, for it. A lo- I think a lot, of this, a lot of this stuff came out because Sony had a, a marketing slide, which people passed around. It was like, oh my God, Call of Duty's not there. That means Xbox has the marketing. Yeah, it wasn't on that slide, but PlayStation still has the marketing. So, yeah, I think they then maybe they didn't include it because the deal hadn't gone fully through yet, or maybe they didn't include it because it was like, yeah, obviously we have Call of Duty, but we also have all of these as well. I don't know, but just because it wasn't on the slide doesn't mean they don't have it. They but do have it. Me and you both agree that there is a very good chance we could see Diablo Four at the showcase. Yeah, I think if. If there's any game that Microsoft has marked it for from Blizzard, it's Diablo Immortal. Uh, not Immortal. Diablo <laughs> 4. Maybe they could get Diablo Immortal marketing as well. But yeah, Diablo 4. The the real Diablo. Like Diablo Immortal is like kind of like a nice appetizer for Diablo, but it's not it's not the game we're all here for. It's not the game we're all hyped for. The game we're all hyped for is Diablo 4, the real the main course, the Mac Daddy, the 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 amazing cinematic game god damn do you remember that cinematic the with lilith the demon like i think that's one of the best you know cinematic intros to a game i've ever seen in my life i am hyped beyond words for diablo 4 and um i think that is probably a game microsoft will want to get onto xcloud as soon as possible because for those of us who don't want to give you know, Activision loads of microtransactions for their pay-to-win Diablo. Um, we'll have Diablo 4 instead, which probably will have microtransactions, but I presume they'll all be of the cosmetic variety, um, hopefully at least. But I don't know. I don't think... Um, I mean, I do think we'll get Diablo at the showcase, you know, and that's one of my predictions as well. I just got tagged by one of my buddies, Dirk Griggity. Apparently... I'm already being quoted that uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake's coming to Game Pass Day 1 and still dropping on the show. Ha! See? This is what I'm talking about. You make these, like, fun predictions and people just... They they just presume you're, you know, leaking, basically. So, dude, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm reluctant to make any fun predictions because people just take it way too seriously. Ah, oh, man. I don't know. But Pushing Polygon says, Jez, isn't Diablo 4 only confirmed for PC at this time? No, it's confirmed for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X as well. Yeah, Idle, Idle, Sloth, Idle Sloth has this whole thing where he, he tweeted it out and it goes, uh, Prediction! Randall Thor 19 predicts Final Fantasy 7 Remake is coming to Xbox and not only that, but it's coming to Game Pass and launching on June 12th. Quote, Go big exactly or go home. I, yeah. It's like, What? <laughs> 
It's just <laughs> I don't what I'm talking about, bro. It's just a fun prediction, man. Like, no, I, 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 like, see, this is why. This is why I'm gonna I'm gonna re, I'm gonna retweet that. I'm no, re-tweet. you be, you better you better absolutely <laughs> I, not. No, do not. I I am retweeting it. No, retweeting because it's it. already got it. like it? it's already got like twenty retweets. I don't know anything. I don't know what the show. Is. <laughs> I, I'm just, I was trying to have a little bit of fun uh, with everybody in uh, chat and having it, fun with you. It, and it, now it. all of a sudden... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm quote retweeting that. No, right, here you we do, go, here we do go. not. Retweet. Absolutely do not quote retweet this. I'm, record, I'm quote retweeting it, man. Uh, here we go. Like, I'm going to use a, a shocked room emoji. There we go. Shocked emoji. <laughs> yeah, there we go, baby. Rand out. There you go, Rand. That's your oh, son. Why? <laughs> Uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what happens. There's going to be a thread of Risa era now, and everyone. I know, be and like, it, but Rand, like it's Rand, li- you. You said this is happening. You uh, lied, Rand. You lied. I know, right? Rand's a liar. Yeah, and you reap what you sow, baby. This is your fault. Hey, he he also he you also quoted happened. you and said Jez has heard that the thousands of players that are playing Fortnite and XCloud has led to double digit growth for the service. Uh, man. <laughs> that's what I, I like uh, well there you go there you go unbelievable you know <laughs> can he can't even have Brilliant. a fun prediction without it getting retweeted by everybody you know i i got like my throat is sore from a hangover, and now I just made it ten times worse. Yeah. Like, a lot of people in chat are saying, "Jez sounds sick. Is Jez okay?" I'm just hungover. I'm hungover. Okay, I'm hungover, and that's why my voice sounds weird and croaky because I drank a liter of whiskey yesterday. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, we uh. we we persevere for you guys. Um, yeah. Man, let's let's do some more from predictions. I predict. I predict. That Scalebound will be announced at E3. Yes. You know what's actually going to close the show? Idle Sloth, if you're, if you're listening, this is a fun <laughs> prediction. This is go big or go home. You know what's going to end the show? Phil's going to come out, and then Kami is going to come out, and they're going to shake hands in the handshake that shook the <clears> industry, <throat> and then they're going to show and announce that Scalebound's back in production, baby. Platinum. Back with Xbox, <laughs> acquired, scale bound, back in full development, and it ends the show, and it looks just as bad as it looked uh, back in 2015. Bro. Uh, tweet that out. Wow. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Oh, my God. So James <sighs> James Moore says it's called Project Gotham because the first game is called Metropolis Street Racer. Okay. Hang on. Metro- Metropolis, isn't that also DC? I mean, that's where... Isn't that where Superman lives? Yeah, that's that's where Superman is, yes. So th- these are DC racing games, then? Mm. One set in Metropolis and one set in... in Gotham, right? So they are DC racing games, right? No? Yes? No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> or is he trolling me right now? <laughs> oh, I'm having fun today. I'm yeah. having fun. Oh, wow. Loads of, loads of people retweeting my retweet. Yeah. Well... Loads of people retweeting my quote retweet, man. Oh, damn. 82 likes already. My- Miles dropping in. Insider confirms. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Rand leaked this. <laughs> you know what? Uh, brilliant. Just this is I love it. Now my notifications are blowing it. up on Twitter. Like, unbelievable. <sighs> oh, brilliant. El- so Elvin Gully says calling it out Scalebound will be announced at the show. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah. the Don JG says Keely just said Modern Warfare 2 will be at the Summer Games Fest. Won't be at the Xbox show for sure. Yes. It is a hundred percent. See now we still got to predict the rest of the show. Is 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 Idle Sloth literally going to just for every studio that we say? I mean, how come <laughs> how come we didn't tweet out that we both we both said that uh, we don't think Halo is gonna Halo Infinite is gonna be at the show? Was that not spicy enough? <laughs> I, 
<laughs> oh man, it's funny. X Power says Morbius Racing for June 12th. <laughs> Morbius Racing. Uh, oh man. Elvin says, "Why is it only the big uh, wigs at Xbox always say we have to, we have two of a genre when it's just two or three games at most?" I don't know. Uh, anyways, thanks for this. I appreciate it because now I'm, I'm probably it's probably gonna go up on reset era. It's pro- people are gonna call me names. People are going to call me, you know, Rand's a nobody. What does he know? And it's like literally just a fun prediction. You know what? You're, you're right. You should have. Yeah. <laughs> no, but dude, what, what, if, it, if it comes true now, if it comes true now, everyone's going to think you're you're either a hardcore, like, insider guy, Randall, not insider. People are going to think like, oh, my God, Rand really does know everything. Or they're going to think you're literally psychic. And they're going to start coming to you like, to predict their futures and yeah, shit. Yeah, well, that's not true. Uh, Daswell <clears> Gordon <throat> says, Project Gotham was the game's code name, apparently. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, skedaddle, just DM me. Gotham is a village in Nottinghamshire, England. That is that is where New York got its nickname as Gotham mm. in 1807. East Coast says... I did not know that. Did Jez actually say none of Xbox's games are high quality and not mind-blowing? Oh, apparently that's gotten out there now, Jez. Oh well, <clears throat> I just. <laughs> oh well, uh, it's on Microsoft to prove me wrong, then, right? Miguel Ivers, thank you for becoming the newest member of the channel. Really appreciate it. <laughs> oh man, this just threw me off my game. Like I saw, I saw this, and I'm like, really? Come on. Anyways, let's get <laughs> let's get back let's get back to uh, talking about this stuff. And uh, Street Fighter VI, Jez, we talked about Resident Evil 4. We're both super excited. You watched the trailer for Street Fighter VI. I think both of me and you in the past have said, don't expect it to come to Xbox. And if it does, well, then you're really happy. And we were both wrong. And great. Love being wrong in this sense because Street Fighter VI is coming to Xbox. And I have to say, I thought it looked pretty damn good. Uh Uh-oh. Did we lose Jez? No, I'm here. I just, I'm just. Oh, great! I'm Tim, Tim Dog DMs. even retweeted it. Oh God, here we go. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm just, I'm just getting loads of DMs about your prediction now. You, the it's going viral, man. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask Phil to retweet Jesus. it. Jesus, let's see if I can get Phil. <laughs> That'd be really funny. If Phil retweeted it. But uh, but so, sorry, what were you saying, Rand? We were talking about <laughs> Street Fighter Six. And I said how cool it really looks. Oh yeah, and how, how you know? So yeah, so I, I'm like I'm I'm a fan of the old school Street Fighter games. You know, like me and my me and my buddy Tom at school, we we used to play these games until like our fingers bled, and we got like all the sort of calluses and blisters on thumbs from you know trying to do Hadoukens and you know sure you kids and all that stuff and um <clears throat> we played it hardcore man like all of them there was so many back then on playstation 1 and playstation 2 and um uh like street fighter alpha and then street fighter alpha x plus and street fighter alpha x plus super duper graphics pack and all this kind of stuff so like but since it's been exclusive i kind of dropped off my fandom of it because it's like well it's not my platform and i don't really want to play on pc so I just kind of ignore that it exists. So it's kind of nice being able to be excited again for a for a for a new Street Fighter, and it looks really, really damn good. I was surprised to see that there's like there's like some kind of open world aspect to it. Like you run around as the characters, and you can do you can punch things open, and maybe get some kind of loot or something. I don't know. Like, but um, it looks great. The visuals look great. It's the RE engine, I guess, right? Um. And sort of the fact that it's going to be on everything should lead to sort of a boost in interest for the fighting game genre in general. And I think, like, if you bring in, like, Street Fighter to a whole new generation of gamers and it's going to be on everything, it really has that potential to go, like, fully viral and, like, hopefully bring in new blood and maybe lead to more investment in fighting games in general. Maybe this this helps boost the chances of us getting a new Killer Instinct if there's, like if microsoft sees the success of this and thinks oh we we should have our own exclusive fighter as well so i'm i'm really hopeful for it and like i said earlier capcom seemingly can do no wrong lately so i think it's 
hype future on the way. What did you think, man? I'm I mean, just I, intrigued I think it looks what really the good. roster is going to be. I know some of it leaked, right? I'm I haven't really, seen the leak. But. Yeah, a lot of the characters leaked and stuff, but I, I'm really happy it's coming to Xbox because it would have been bad if two Street Fighter games and two you know, consecutive generations skipped Xbox. That would have been a very, very bad thing. So, you know, I, I'm happy for everybody that uh, <clears throat> that you can be able to play your Street Fighter on Xbox next year. They didn't give a date, so it's probably later in the year. So Street Fighter Six coming to Xbox. But I thought for me, game of game of state of play was the Callisto Project. Uh, yeah, that looks. Oh my lord! Pretty damn mind blowing. Give it to me right now. Give it to me right now. Like not. Glenn Schofield's the you know the studio head. He's the one who made Dead Space. So this definitely looks like a spiritual successor to Dead Space One and Two. And bro, it rocketed up for me to like second most anticipated game of the year. Like there's still God of War Ragnarok is still number one, but like slightly behind that is the Callisto Project. I, like everything they, I saw <clears throat> from that game, the horror aspects and everything, I it it uh, you know I would not be surprised if Callisto Project is better than the Dead Space remake, which would be hysterical considering this is a spiritual successor. Yeah, I did. They announce a launch date. Yeah, I think it's uh, December second. Yeah, December second. Oh, that's a very very Christmassy kind of game. Very yeah, very definitely. perfect kind of Christmas game. Yeah, it looked amazing. Like atmospherically on point, graphics look crisp and super creative. Like it kind of reminded me of this old vi- this old movie called um, The Virus. Have you seen that? It's sort of like a body horror sort of movie. It's the, it's not great, but it has some like really great costuming and stuff. I I I'm kind of rooting for this, not just because it's going to be a great horror game and I love horror games. And also, Glenn Schofield is a, a master of of the medium. But I'm sort of rooting for this because I want to fuck over EA. And I want EA to recognize what they did to Visceral was absolutely ridiculous and dumb and short-sighted. And the fact that they're remaking Dead Space, which is a game which arguably doesn't even need a remake, in my view, um, is a cynical cash grab because they realized how absolutely dumb they were to have treated Visceral the way they did, you know? And I just want, I want Callisto product to do really well because I want it to fuck over EA more than anything, you know? Jeez. If I get, if I get a good horror game out of it, great. But if it, if it fucks over EA even more, then even great. So that's my view on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm spiteful, Ryan. I'm spiteful. And I'm still bitter that they closed down Visceral. I'm still bitter that they forced Visceral to make a Battlefield clone or Battlefield spin-off rather. That just was not what they it wasn't their DNA to make a Battlefield game. It clearly was not. So yeah. Yeah. I just want EA to get fucked over. Ahmed Please. in the super chat says, Hi, how did you find the R style Street Fighter Six? I love the R style. I, I I think the game looks yeah looks, I thought it looked really good I th- yeah I think it looks flashy I like the little like f- flares of I don't even know what to call it like uh, color when people attack I did I thought it was interesting though that there is no Xbox One version but there is a PS4 version so it's next gen only for Xbox but PS5 and PS4 presumably because they're gonna use the PS4 is for tournaments, like fighting game, like the fighting game community. Plus, also like uh-huh. Street Fighter Five was on PlayStation Four. There's probably that's where the audience is. It wasn't on Xbox One, so maybe it didn't make any sense to port it to Xbox One. So that that was something I did take away from the trailer. But yeah, super excited uh, for Callisto Project. You know, Street Fighter Six and Resident Evil Four. So I thought State of Play was pretty good. It's good for Xbox fans. Uh, a lot of uh, great multi-plat titles coming over. And uh, before we get into our predictions for the showcase, which, God, these better not all be tweeted out. Um, can you guys do us a big favor and hit the like button? I, people are saying that I got slothed. 
like, oh man, you just got sloth. sloth. Yeah, I guess that's that's a new sloth. thing. I got sloth. <clears throat> um, I Miguel sloth. Ivers in the super chat says, "F Marvel, F DC, and F Star Wars. Where's my AAA open world, Breath of the Wild like, Sifu like, deep combat OG Dragon Ball RPG, killing two birds with one stone, <laughs> huge IP, and guaranteed guaranteed Japanese Asia hit." Man. Mm. It kind of bugs me how, I don't know, how underutilized the Dragon Ball IP is in gaming. Like, I remember when, even when I was a little kid, I was thinking this, like, where, where the hell is our, like, high-quality Dragon Ball game? And they just, they just wasn't really any. There's, like, a couple of decent fighting games, but there was no, like, sprawling Goku simulator, which is, you know, where the franchise logically should go from a gameplay perspective, but... Who knows, man? Maybe we'll get it someday. But I wouldn't hold my breath. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, Sony announced that uh, both Spider-Man games are coming to PC. And uh, you, you had you had a nice little tweet about that. Josh. Yeah. You had a nice little tweet. I did, yeah. You... I mean, I mean I'm, I'm all about that. I'm all about PlayStation bangers hitting PC. Yeah? Are, um, you, are you actually going to play Spider-Man now that's coming to Windows PC? I'll give it a go. I, I think I, I upset some people on um on Defining Duke podcast when was it Defining Duke or was it was it on our podcast? I can't even remember. I don't think it was Defining Duke. When I talked I talked about how um Oh, it was on our podcast. It compared Spider Man and Batman in Google Trends. Yo, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Batman's yeah. bigger than Spider Man. Yeah. And some people were like, Oh my god, Spider Man's the biggest. No, no, no. It's like, no, well, Google Trends says that Batman's bigger, you know. Google Trends don't lie. But, uh, I don't know. But yeah, I'll definitely give it a go, you know, now that it's coming to PC. Like, I've always said, I won't buy a whole console just for a few exclusives. I won't do it, you know, because I barely have time to play the, the games that I've got, you know. I've got a, a PC and an Xbox is more than enough for me. Like, my Switch barely gets any usage. So, like, what, why would I buy a whole other console just for that I, I'm not going to have time to use, you know? But, because I've already got a PC, I'll rock that game on my pc and um i'll definitely give it a go and probably i might even review it for windows central review the port like mm. because sony has actually been pretty damn amazing at porting um the games to pc to be honest like days gone port was really good and uh, horizon port was really good i thought like it did have some issues i think on some some setups but on my setup it was really really good um so I think they've been doing a great job of it so far, and uh, it's exciting to see that continue. I'm also, you know, I I do intend Rand to one day finish Death Stranding. You're uh, never gonna this finish is the, it. The, this... You're never gonna finish it. I am. It. I am. No, you're I not. Am, I am. I am. No. I am. I am. No. Don't say I'm not. You need, did you even? Finish I'm gonna God finish it, man. Did you even finish God of War? I did finish God of War. Okay, good. I it. Good. Um, but. but I didn't fin. I didn't fully finish Death Stranding, and I didn't fully finish Days Gone either. I'm going to finish both of those games. No, you won't. Because it's the summer. It's the summer of the backlog. For me, summer bro. of the backlog. Okay. It's summer of the backlog. I'm going to finish all, all the backlog games, and uh, yeah. Are you surprised that there are still some Sony fans that are upset at this stuff? Like they don't, they don't see the the writing on the wall about Sony and PC. Are they, are they, is that really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is that really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but then there's also the ones are that you are sure they're not just trolling. No, no, no. They can definitely tell which ones are trolling because I know some of them are trolling. But it's just it's interesting because a lot of them move the goalposts. A lot of them are like, well, I don't know how this is a big deal. It's four years later, right? Like Spider Man 2018, and it's and it's like, yeah. But the thing is, you weren't saying you were saying they would never come. Right, like it all started. Sony would never put their games on PC back in 2018. Never, never, because unlike <laughs> Xbox, Sony knows the value of an exclusive. The reason why nobody buys Xbox is because the Xbox is useless because you can get all their exclusives on PC. Right, even though right now uh -huh. the Series X and S, fastest selling Xboxes ever, essentially consoles you don't even need. Because all their games are on PC, and yet they're selling out all the time. 
faster than ever before. And I've always said that the PC console crowd really, there's not a lot of crossover. PC guys are going to be PC guys. They're not buying consoles to play these games. And and console guys are going to basically be console guys. They're not going to go out there and get top-of-the-line rigs to play their stuff. Some might, but it's not going to be a significant you know audience, <clears throat> right? I'm definitely the exception. And to be honest, I, I got a high-end PC more for content creation than gaming. You know, it's just it's just like it's a byproduct of the fact that, you know, I need a GPU to video edit and stuff when I, back when I did do it. I don't really do it that much anymore. But, like, I, Xbox is my primary platform, and it always will be, you know. But, um, well, lately it's been my phone. I'm just a casual now around. I'm just a casual mobile gamer. But my point was, like, the goalpost was... Sony would never do this yeah, they thing. Never, never do this thing. And then the goalposts constantly shifted to, well, Quantic Dream is porting their games to PC because Sony is an investor in Epic, right? And then it was like, Sony would never put Uncharted on there. And then Sony put Uncharted in there. And then, and then it was like, Sony would never put God of War on there. And then they put God of War in there. And they put Horizon on there. And it's like, Sony would never put Spider-Man on there, which now they have. But now it's like, well, these are all four-year-old games. Sony would never do Day and Date. And it's just like, oh. you don't think so? You don't think they're going to do Day and Date? You don't think these live service games that Sony has, like 15 of them coming in the next three or four years, you don't think they're going to launch on PC and PlayStation the same day? Uh, like, are the you that they're building blind? a launcher for... Yeah. Are you that... It's like, they're, they're, building a, they're building a PC launcher. Do you think they're building that for fun? I, I, don't, I don't think they're building that for fun, Ron. I don't get it, man. It's like, I, I get it, the, the whole console war thing, because I think PlayStation guys don't want... Because the PlayStation guys always gave Xbox guys, you know, crap for, you know, oh, you don't need an Xbox to play games. Oh, you know, like... Oh, like and I, I think they're just a little... They don't want Xbox guys to then go and say the same thing to Sony guys, being like, now you don't need a PlayStation because... PlayStation games yeah. are all on PC, but if you look at what Sony's been saying about how they're going to become an even a multi-platform company, you look at everything they're doing, the type of games they're making, like the idea that it's okay because it's a four-year gap from release to PC release, and that you think it's going to stay a four-year gap is ridiculous. Think with your brain, not with your fanboy heart. Those gaps are going to close. It's going to be like one year or maybe a one and a half years because of, you know, all the work that needs to happen with these things and, you know, the, the pandemic stuff that we're finally getting on the other side of. Eventually, it's going to be one year gap and then maybe like six months gaps. And once Sony has hard data that putting their games on PC day one doesn't affect their console sales at all, then their games are going to be on PC day one. Because it's also yeah. when you launch on PC as well as console, yeah. you get more and more people talking about your game on social media, probably even having more and more people than buying those games. Because What does Xbox call that? The Halo? They call that, uh, what do they call that effect with Game Pass? Because more and more people are playing about it, talking about it, that causes more and more people to actually go and buy the game. So if it's like. It's just a marketing term, the Halo effect. Yeah. So like. That's going to happen. I don't know why Why it's like, oh, it's four years, man. Uh, think with your head. Think with your brain. Anyways, Spider-Man on PC. Or think with your balls oh, yeah. and get 20% off. Code XB2. I have my notifications on Twitter keep on going off, but I can't look at it because we're doing a live podcast. TB. I because uh, I like multitasking. And the Super Chat says... As I'm late to the show, can I please ask a question on a topic you've already talked about at the beginning of the show? Your pod is the best. Thank you. I mean, you can always ask a question. We'll answer it. Uh, Francisco, you had a $1 super chat with no message. Appreciate that. My man, Gaming Forte, he's been a member for 21 months, says, Sup, bro. Just over one week until the world is set on fire. Quote, good or bad for Xbox. Have a great weekend. I'm about to enjoy me some Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I cannot wait to see Top Gun Maverick. I'm going to watch it when it comes to uh, available to rent. Uh, I don't really go out to the movies very much. Uh, what I do you... saw the original. Really? Is it good? Is it, is yeah, it aged well? Should uh, I watch the original um, before I watch the new one? I don't know if it's aged well. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. I don't know. I don't necessarily know if you 
need to watch it uh, for this one. Probably, though. It's probably some callbacks. Uh, Whittia says, Tunic being announced as a pl- for PlayStation at, for September, where does that leave Sifu and Kenna on Xbox? I mean, whenever their exclusivity contracts are up and however long it takes them to port those games is is whenever they'll they'll come. You know, who knows what the who, who knows the extent and length of those deals. Microsoft tends to go for smaller deals so they can get more games on Game Pass, uh, like exclusive exclusive wise for a few months. PlayStation tends to go for yeah. the longer longer deals. Uh, for the indie titles. Uh, Dan says, it seemed on Twitter last night the biggest Xbox news of 2022 is Spider-Man coming to PC so people can say it's no longer technically exclusive. Well, that's because Xbox guys are just giving back to the PlayStation guys. It's ex- exactly what I said. You know, like, I think maybe people are starting to realize that Sony's really serious about the PC stuff, so now the Xbox guys can just dish back what the PlayStation guys gave them, essentially. That's what it really comes down to. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a bit. Miguel says last of us remake factions, last of us Two PS five day one promote show. Yeah. Um, anyways, let's, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about our predictions for the showcase. Shall we? And, yeah, uh, let's predict, let's, let's, get let's into predict, it. let's see each one of these things on Twitter. Cause these are going to be wrong. It's going to be fun. I mean, my final fantasy seven thing is probably going to be wrong too. And then I'll, and then people will bring that up. Rand was wrong about this. Like, okay, well, I mean, yeah. a prediction's a prediction. So, let's uh, let's start with let's start with a small one. Acquisitions, thing that people love talking about. Who's gonna acquire who next? We know Sony. I mean, Jim Ryan said recently that they're gonna acquire more studios. Xbox is currently in the uh, you know uh, throes of acquiring. Activision, do we see Xbox acquire anybody during the showcase? Announce announce an acquisition. I think, yeah, I think the answer to that is no. I've heard that the acquisition of Activision Blizzard is just like it's going smoothly, but it's just a mountain of work. Like someone said, like they've worked in mer- someone said to me they've worked in mergers and acquisitions for a long time, and they've never seen this amount of paperwork in their life. So. I think it's pro- they're probably all hands on deck on the Xbox side for um for our acquisitions, and furthermore, I think if they acquired more studios right now, it would co- sort of it would it wouldn't look good from a regulatory perspective, possibly. So, and also Aaron Greenberg himself said there's no business at the show, which kind of is kind of a hint. It's kind of like saying Did he? no business. Me, yeah, uh, he said something like that. I oh. think. Or unless I'm I'm mistaken. He said that for um, one of the other show. I didn't know if he actually said it for this one yet. Oh, okay, maybe I'm I'm getting it mixed up then. But um, but yeah, even still, even if he didn't say that this this year, and I'm I'm getting confused. Um, I don't think uh, I don't think there'll be acquisitions of the show. I mean, what do you think? Um, I've got a feeling you think the same as me. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh. I think I think it's just going to be about games. I don't think you're going to see any hardware or any acquisitions. So moving on from that, three four three jazz. You know, for a while I thought uh, three four three. I thought Halo was a lock for the showcase. It's their huge. It's a huge game. Uh, even though it's going through some problems with their live service aspect, you know, you leak Project Tataka, which is their BR Warzone mode and it kind of made sense like okay well this is the xbox's biggest day of the year you have a trailer showcasing co-op and forge and end with like an announcement of battle royale coming in whatever season i felt that made a lot of sense because we know xbox loves their live service titles and we've seen stuff like sea of thieves be at shows in the past even though it's four years old at this point right but i don't know i kind of feel in my gut that Halo Infinite's not going to be there. That's going to skip because I don't think they have a firm grasp on when Tatanka's going to release or when it's going to be ready. So I I think they're just going to just it just doesn't show up at all. And because I don't think you can show up to the showcase with a trailer for Halo Infinite just being like, oh guys, co-op's coming, have fun. 
like I, I, I don't, I feel like that would just, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't send the right message. I think Halo Infinite just doesn't show up at all. Yeah, I agree. I, I think like, I think hi, what Halo Infinite needs is they need to, because they, they've got to know that community sentiment around Halo is pretty negative right now. And they, if they come out with a, a sort of lackluster sort of, yeah, he's co-op or it's just like a little teaser for Tatanka or whatever. I think, it, I don't think it will have the desired effect. It won't have the desired impact. So I think what they do is maybe they wait until they've got a more, a more detailed presentation to make and then they just sort of like they announce it as a separate event and they sort of like they do like a a halo mini event at some point maybe where it's like they talk about the tanker and they talk about season three and maybe t season four presumably to tanker season four at this point so i think i think there's a good chance that 343 will skip um and I think, like, the, if the, if it is going to skip, I think they might put a tweet out before the show saying like something like, you know, just to, you know, fix expectations and being like, yeah, um, Halo Infinite's not going to be at the show, but we've got some great stuff for you coming in the coming weeks or months or something like that. I kind of feel like that's probably what they'll do. But, um, yeah, that's personally what I think. But I agree with you. I think that's the way it's going to go down, but... I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now, you've mentioned in previous shows that you're fairly certain that there is another game that 343 is making. But you don't know what it is. You don't know if it's a Halo-related game. Or, <clears throat> but this is separate from, like, DLC for Halo Infinite. Is it possible 343 shows up and shows this game and just doesn't talk about Halo Infinite? I... Honestly, don't know. I don't know a damn thing about this game. I don't know like what stage of development's in. I don't know if it's just a concept or them looking ahead or you know putting ideas together or if it's something more more corporeal and something that you know that is gearing up to be shown off. I don't know if it's a smaller game or or anything like that. Um, I'm gonna predict no, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna predict no, but I could be wrong. Rand, my my dude, I really need to get a drink because my mouth right. is my you, throat is really dry. So just give me two minutes. A whiskey drink? A whiskey re- drink? No, we're not we're not drinking any more alcohol <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> yeah, just let me get a drink because my throat's getting like really right. really messed up. Right. So I'll I'll be back in two minutes. Uh, Miami Magpie has been a member for six months. Says I know you have said this before, but that is your TV recommendation for the Series X. Um. I- I recommend the TV that I use, which is um, LG OLED uh, CX. I have a 65 inch. I would have bought in the 77 if it was on sale. Uh, but I love the TV. Now, I think there's two more models since then. I want to say like there's the C1s came out or maybe two models after the C, after the C, the X's. So maybe if you're looking for like brand new, brand new, look in, into the like the the LG uh, C1s um but I am extremely happy with the CX but I don't think you can get the CXs anymore cuz I think they're two generations behind so yeah um as for the next one so we got 343 three. we'll go to we'll go to we'll go to Bethesda and we'll talk about machine games because I've seen a lot of people talking about Wolfenstein recently uh, Dr. Dinglenut says a C1 and C2. Okay, well, there you go. So the C2s, are, I think, are the newest, and the C1s are the ones after the CX. So, yeah, you might want to look into those. Because I don't think you can buy the CXs anymore. Um, Machine Games is a developer I see brought up a lot and is a favorite of Reset Era. Uh, people over there are wanting to believe that Wolfenstein 3 is going to be announced at the showcase and not only be announced, but actually released this fall, which is something I would greatly desire. I'm a big fan of the Wolfenstein series, even though Wolfenstein Youngblood was pretty bad. I still want to see the trilogy complete. And yeah, you know, uh, Pete Hines talked about the game essentially being real a couple years ago. And I've said previously that I think at some point they were working on the game, except they got the deal for Indiana Jones, and I think they sidelined Wolfenstein 3. So 
as much as I want to believe Wolf Machine Games is going to show up with Wolfenstein 3, I don't think I don't think they will. And this is something I would love to be wrong on. I would love to just have everybody just make fun of me and be like, haha, you took the L on this one. Like, I'll gladly take the L if we tune into the showcase and see a Wolfenstein 3 announced, even if it's for next year. But I think they're just all working in Indiana Jones. And they'll revisit Wolfenstein afterwards. So I guess that begs the question, since we know they're working on Indiana Jones, is does that game show up this year? And I've been going back and forth in my head about what game is going to start, what game is going to open the show, and what game is going to end the show. Now, the easiest answer or the safest choice is to say Starfield is going to open or close the show. And I actually think Starfield is going to be in the middle of the show. Personally, mm. I don't I don't want Starfield ending the show. I want something new. Why not? Because I want something new. Like we saw Starfield last year. I don't really I I don't want Starfield to end the show. I want it in the middle or I want it to open. So I kind of want something brand new unseen, whether that's like a banjo game, whether that's, you know, uh, a, a new Fallout game, or realistically, the first look at Indiana Jones. So, I'm just, look, see, this is, this is where I'm having fun. It's predictions. Even though apparently all my, all my, all, everything I say is literally going to be tweeted out live for everybody. And, I'm just going to say, you know what? I think Indiana Jones ends the show. I think I think they show off a CGI trailer for Indiana Ooh. Jones. So, Machine CGI? Games... CGI? To end the show? I don't think so. Well, they've done... I mean, they can do maybe like a scripted gameplay thing, I guess. I mean, I'll just say I think Indiana Jones ends the show. They, Wolfenstein 3 is mm. not there. Indiana Jones ends the show. Um with the CGI or whatever, whatever the hell they're, they're planning on doing. I think that's what, I think that's what they're going to end the show with. Um, what do you, what do you think about machine games, Jez? Machine games. That's what we're talking about specifically right now, right? Yes. Yes. Are we still, I went on a tangent about like opening and closing and stuff, but okay. Machine games is interesting. Uh, a lot of people are waiting for Wolfenstein three announcements and stuff like that. I have no inside knowledge about what's going on there, so don't take this as Lisa's predictions. But the timeline for at least announcing a new Wolfenstein feels right to me. It feels like we we sort of get into that point now where maybe Indiana Jones is wrapping up, and that they can start looking ahead what comes after that. So I think like it would be pretty cool if we got Indiana Jones gameplay, um, which by the way I expect is multi platform. Um, by the way, mm. um, that's a and that's uh, a Nick versus Jez thing because Nick says it's exclusive. So which one of you will be yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, as a, I suppose there's only a fifty fifty percent chance. But um, I I heard a long time ago that it was multi platform, and uh, you know that PlayStation versions of the game exist. So if it isn't multi platform anymore, something's changed. But I heard it's multi-platform, and I don't honestly don't think it's changed because they don't own the license for it. Your boys Disney own the license for it, and presumably Disney want that to be everywhere. And the contracts for that game were signed long in advance of Microsoft purchasing. Uh, I was going to say Activision Bethesda. <laughs> wow, what a dark timeline that would be. Um, but no, not Activision Bethesda. Uh, Bethesda, 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 Bethesda. So. Um, yeah, I think there's a there's a good chance that we could see it at the end of Jones gameplay, and they'll be like, "This is what we're doing next," and that is machine games, Wolfenstein three. Um, does it close the show though? I don't think you close the show with a multi platform game. I think personally, there will be gameplay for Indiana Jones, but I don't think it closes the show unless it's like if unless it is exclusive and unless it's absolutely super. Triple A really? banger, super duper cool. Yeah, I think because Starfield Xbox closed, closed the, the show with Multiplats before they closed it with uh, Anthem in 2017. They closed it with Cyberpunk in 2018. They're they're not above 
Yeah. Closing it with multi-platform not... games, Jazz. They're not above it, but I think like the way the narratives are being spun right now, I think you really want to slam home that sort of like this is our exclusive content kind of thing. I think Starfield closes the show. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, I know you don't. I don't like it, but I think like I think Starfield closes the show. I think we we end the show on a Forza Horizon like demo, longer demo with Todd Howard describing how Starfield actually plays. I think that's how you end the show. Similarly to how they ended it with Forza Horizon last year, with a sort of walkthrough demo. I think that's how the show's going to end. Could be wrong, but I don't think you put that kind of demo in the middle of the show. Maybe you could open the show with that kind of demo, but I kind of feel like you want to come out the gate with sort of like excitement, quick surprises. Maybe Indiana Jones opens the show, you know. Um, but I personally, I think like it's going to be a slower sort of longer form demo, and I think that's going to close the, the show. Only way, the only way, the only way I will accept Starfield closing the show is if they have. S- one more thing after it where you have a 10 minute Todd Howard demo with Starfield. And then he's like, but wait a minute, we're not finished. You've just seen Starfield and what the next gen experience looks like from Bethesda game studios. But here's a quick look at something else we're working on and boom, it's a trailer for fallout new Vegas two in conjunction with obsidian or boom, it's a trailer for fallout five or boom, it's a trailer for Elder Scrolls 6. I just think if you're ending it with Starfield, you need to also end it with like that little that little stinger at the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. I think that would be pretty cool if they did like the slower sort of demo for, for Starfield and then everyone's sort of like relaxing and like, yeah, Starfield looks great. And then like they bring the excitement back up right at the end with a sort of a fallout tease in some way. You know, which, giving fans something that they want that isn't Fallout 76 related. Which, by the way, another bold prediction. <clears throat> another bold prediction, just like my Final Fantasy VII Remake one. I think Fallout's mm-hmm. at the show. I think there's a f- Fallout game at the show. There's going to be a Fallout announcement. Whether it's Fallout 5, whether it's Fallout New Vegas 2, or whatever they call it from Obsidian or whether it's a Fallout remaster remake of Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, there is going to be there's going to be a Fallout presence at this show. Mm, that's a bold prediction. I wonder if Idle Sloth will, will drop that in a minute. But yeah, probably. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to believe you're right. I want to believe you're see, right. See, you know, I'm not waffling, Jazz. I'm putting my foot down, saying yes and saying no's. You know, you're doing the whole. I don't know. Maybe it might, possibly. Who knows? All because you just don't yeah, want. You don't want to. You don't want to get tweeted out, and you don't want to be in articles and stuff. So you know. I don't want the heat, man. I don't. I don't want the the spice. That's a bit spicy for me. But yeah. um. But yeah, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I. I mean, I want to believe there'll be a Fallout presence at the show. Like, there's there's a lot of Fallout that I would like to see. Like, Fallout's one of my favorite franchises. Got a huge post on the wall. I got a Fallout 76 construction kit, which, by the way, I discovered is worth almost a thousand dollars. Oh no! Yeah, so I, I I bought a Fallout 76 Pit Boy construction kit and never opened it. And like, I I've been looking at it for ages, thinking like, should I build that? Should I actually build that? And I looked. At, I saw them on eBay, and they're going for like almost a thousand dollars. I'm like, oh, maybe I should just sell it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think I want Microsoft to put its mark on the Fallout franchise and be like, yes, this is our franchise now, and this is what we're doing with it. So yeah, I would hope that we see Fallout at the show, even if it's Fallout Shelter Two. I'd be happy with that because now I'm a mobile gamer, man. I'm a mm. mobile gamer, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ross Lang in the super chat says, "If Disney wants its IPs like Machine Games, New Game on all platforms, then why is Wolverine a P- PlayStation exclusive? Doesn't seem consistent." Well, I think when you're talking to Sony about a game, the inherent impl- imp- the inherent implication is that the game is going to be exclusive since you're talking to PlayStation. But if you're talking to Bethesda, who at the time was a big multi-platform developer, the implication is it's going to be everywhere i think there's that's a significant difference uh people overlook and 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 in those yeah, sort of things yeah, yeah. so yeah going yeah. back to 
Xbox Game Studios, we're talking about The Coalition. Now, our buddy Special Nick, Baron, been out there saying, listen, he's he's got the insider info and that there's a Gears collection coming. You know, like Master Chief style collection. You know, Gears 1, Gears 2, Gears 3, Gears Judgment, packed in together. Um, a lot of people want this, a lot of people don't. I'm in the camp of the people who don't. So, as someone who doesn't want a Gears collection, I'm just going to say it's not real. And it's not real because I don't want it. <laughs> so, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say it's not real because it's not real. Really? <laughs> I don't. I don't believe. I, it just doesn't make any sense for me. I mean, maybe, maybe they, maybe they're thinking like, yeah, if we make a Gears collection, some people buy it, and that that helps cash flow the coalition for a little while because they've got a lot of employees, and like they they don't really have a big project right now, and I don't think anyone's buying Gears Five microtransactions anymore. So maybe they just make it as a sort of cash flow thing or something. But for me, it's kind of like, man, Gears Two kind of holds up with the upgrades, and so does Gears Three. Like, a remaster collection, for me, doesn't make a lot of sense. What would make more sense is a sort of full-blown remake of one of those games. Like, give it the sort of anniversary edition treatment that Halo got. But, I, I don't, for me, I, yeah, I don't think a remaster makes sense when you, you've, got, you've got the backwards compatible remakes already. What's the point? So, I, for me, I don't think it's real because it doesn't seem to make a huge amount of sense, but... I know a lot of people want it, and maybe they maybe they've got some like unique ways to make it make sense. Maybe like it has like every single multiplayer map ever in, in one sort of package and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, I'm I'm still I still think it's a stretch, man. I think it's a stretch. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that it's not there because it doesn't exist. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah. We do know the coalition's working on something else besides Gears Six. Well, do you think that other project shows up? That's a good question. I honestly do not know. Um, I think there's a. It's one of those that I have literally no information about, so I have no idea like what what position of development it's in. Um, I kind of want to believe that they're all in on Gear Six and making Gear Six the best it can be and taking it to that next level that everyone ultimately wants to see Good Coalition here. They've got a lot of devs at that studio. And, like, they they always seem to be, like... I love Gears 5, don't get me wrong. But I, I always felt like it didn't, it didn't go far enough. It didn't go far enough in its open-world aspects. It didn't go far enough in its sort of soft progression systems. It just didn't go far enough for me. It had, like, a couple of story decisions in the game were, like, one. And it's just, like... Yeah, you you're dipping your toes into all these systems, but you're not. There's no conviction there. There's no conviction. It's like, yeah, we got this soft progression system. Yeah, there's like one story choice, and it's like I've seen all these systems in other games, especially third person shooters, and I just kept thinking like, this is sort of soft Mass Effect at this point. You've got like one story decision. You've got like a couple of tracks of different powers and stuff, and you've got like these soft open world areas. It felt like it just didn't go far enough. So I want to see the Coalition get to that next level. I don't care how long it takes. Take like a million years to make the next game. But I'm hoping that they're all in on Gears, and maybe that's why they won't be there. I don't want to see a Gears collection. I want to see the Gears go to the next level. I'm tired of them rehashing the old games, you know? Yeah. But I might be the minority there. It's funny because... I also want to see Gears Tactics too. It was last year where the coalition literally said that they were going to go dark for a while and they weren't going to announce anything for a little bit. Remember? Yeah. And I just they did say that. So I sort of feel like they're, they're not going to show up at the show. I, it'd be odd for them to say last year, like don't expect any announcements from us from a bit. And then the next year, here's gears collection, you know, and, and, and here's maybe this other game. So, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that <laughs> Coalition's not there and that their smaller game is 2024, so they'll be at the next show and then maybe at the next show they do like here's our our small game, but then here's like Gear Six we're working on too, and then they could be like Gear Six is a little bit further off. Yeah. Um, and I'm personally just saying I don't think because I don't want the Gears collection to be real. I'm just gonna say it's not real because I don't want it to be real. 
I'm just, I don't know. Like <laughs> for it to excite me, they would have to really show me why I want to play Gears 2 um, again, because it's already in back compat. It's already got the Hochi method. So it runs at 4k, it runs at 60 frames. It looks great. So it's like that remaster would have to be like, okay, you got ray tracing in this thing. It'd have to look so much better for me to be like, yeah, I really want to replay this. I don't know. Yeah, with like destructible environments and all that kind of stuff. It ne- it wouldn't really need something new to prove what to. It needs to earn its existence. If it doesn't, if it's just a, a sort of like a basic sort of Resident Evil Three style bare minimum kind of thing, I don't want to know. Because Resident Evil Three was so disappointing. As someone who was a fan of the original, they literally just ripped the assets out of Resident Evil Two remake cobbled it together into a dlc sized game that they sold for maximum price they didn't even put the grave digger worm boss fight in that game and i'm still bitter about that still bitter and then there was that horrible multiplayer mode that literally nobody wanted and nobody played so if it's something like that that sort of why does this exist i don't even want it so yeah i don't believe that right miguel says what about game I'm with pass you. titles coalition ain't there what about Game Pass titles Callisto is Suicide Squad? Uh, I think if they do get Suicide Squad, it wouldn't be announced at this show. I mean, that game's not coming out till next year. No way they announce it that far in advance. And I don't really think Whoa. Suicide Squad would be a Game Pass Day 1 title. Uh, Callisto, I mean, looking at it, that seems like that game's got Sony marketing. So that would that would say no to me. So, sorry. People are critiquing my Halo gameplay. I just like literally just recorded and I didn't care if I died or not. I think it's just on, um, it's a difficult one, the one step under legendary, whatever that is. I don't know. People are like, your, your Halo, your Halo gameplay is horrible. It's like, I'm not trying to be super pro. I just needed the, an hour of footage. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry. I was actually thinking earlier, we, we need to start recording some more gameplay footage. So like we've actually got more variety there. Well, that's um, that's actually because we we often just use the same footage. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna record you two hours of Diablo Immortal gameplay. People can watch that. Yeah, well, that, this <laughs> this Halo stuff was actually recent. I just never really used it. So, uh, Chris R yeah, says Halo's the old. It's an old game. Yeah, no I one know. cares about that anymore. Probably not. Uh, Chris R <laughs> says the Gears collection might be viewed as a way to get all the Gears games on PC. Gears two and three are only still on console. That's true. That is that is true, and that's probably that is true. A way you can justify it. I, I just, I'm not interested in it. So it's just like, I just don't want it to be true because I'm not interested in it. I know that's a very selfish thing to say, but uh, you know what else can I say? You know, I, I feel like the Banjo Bros need their banjo game, and even though I'm not interested in banjo, it's been a while for them. Gears Bros have had all the Gears games they've they've ever need, they've ever needed. You know, I feel like the Gears Gears fans are constantly given things all the time. So it's like, do they need a Gears collection? Is Gears mm. popular enough to deserve a collection like Halo? Definitely not. Definitely not as popular as Halo. Wow, mm-hmm. that's me. That's for get me getting back at you from what you were saying on Defining Duke. So, what did I say on Defining Duke? You were talking bad about Hellblade 2 and you were talking bad about 343 and Halo and stuff, so. Uh, I was not talking bad, was I? I was just... You're always talking bad facts, about... You're baby. always talking bad about the things I like. Nah. Yeah. I talk, it sounds like spitting facts to me, man. Um, Jason Dill says, Randy, think Sneak King 2 gets announced? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, Cheeto Gaming, thanks for the dollar. Sneak King. And uh, he also says, what if they announce the Gears Collection running on Unreal Engine 5? Well, that's essentially what it would be would be gears two i guess we'd have to see it if, if it looks significantly better then you know we'll see uh dead planet says gears needs a god of war 2018 level of reinvention uh lock lock it in a dark room for a while and find the next evolution of third person cover shooting level it up yep so moving on from the coalition let's talk about obsidian because obsidian could be the big star of the show even more so than Bethesda, because we know Bethesda is probably going to have at least two games. 
But there's a really good chance, I think, but Obsidian shows up with three games. One being Grounded 1.0. They've already talked about how that game is scheduled for 1.0 release, so I would imagine there's going to be a trailer. Uh, Avowed, I think, is a lock. I think you can take it to the bank. Avowed's going to be there. And there's probably even a good chance Avowed ends the show when you think about titles and and ways they could end the show. But I would imagine... mm, Maybe Starfield's probably a better game to end the show to lead into a stinger than Avowed would be. Maybe Avowed opens the show. There you go, Jez. You could open the show with yeah, gameplay of Avowed. I think that'd be that'd be a good way to do it. Because um, both me and you agree that we think Avowed is a lock. Um, and Josh Sawyer's game, Pentiment, which he even tweeted... Uh, retweeted the showcase announcement on Wednesday and said, you know, he's getting ready, painting his nails. So there's a very, very, very good chance <laughs> that three Obsidian games show up at the showcase. I think it's going to be a lot from Obsidian at the show. I think I think we see Pentiment. I think we see Grounded 1.0. And I think we see Avowed. I think we see full-blown Avowed gameplay, Blowout, and they, they announce a launch window maybe 2023. Just be like, yeah, this is coming holiday 2023 or something. I've seen some people like thinking it could launch this year. Uh, if, if it launches this year, I will be absolutely shocked. I'll be stunned if they manage to get that out for this year. I think next year is far more likely, but who knows? You know, who knows? I think it'd be really cool to see a vowed drop into sort of a quarter two, maybe pre summer drop straight into game pass it can like completely dominate because there won't be any other games coming out then presumably and i don't know i'm really really intrigued by that idea um i'm just i'm i've seen about gameplay i've seen pre-alpha about gameplay and even in a pre-alpha state it looked exactly like the kind of game i want to play and i think obsidian is just a tremendous dev and i think they're going to do amazing things with microsoft's money and uh i'm excited I'm excited for about right. Uh, Carlos says Mandalorian and Republic Commando two by the Coalition. I mean, it would be pretty damn dope if they were working on a Star Wars game. I'd take both of those. Republic Commando two would be incredible. Uh, Bookster nineteen nineteen says Gears is greater than Halo. Just facts, Rand. Well, you're you're Jez's new best friend now. <laughs> he loves you. He's right. He's not wrong. To be fair, yeah, he's uh, right. Ty- Taylor says, Rand, do you agree with Blessing from Kind of Funny that Avowed will get cancelled? Uh, <laughs> I d- no, Avowed is... Avowed get- he must be thinking of something else. Uh, Avowed not definitely not getting cancelled. I don't know where that comes from. Who said that? Uh, he says, Blessing from Kind of Funny said that Avowed will get cancelled. I don't, I don't know. It's definitely not getting cancelled. Yeah. Uh, Gold Chill... Goldshell says Nick said Starcraft Nick said Starcraft Ghost may be revived. I mean, they should revive some Starcraft properties once the acquisition goes through. A hundred percent, they should. Uh, and Face, I know. Sorry, go on. Well, Face twenty three, he says, which survival horror game are you most excited for? Resident Evil Four Remake, Callisto Protocol, or the Dead Space Remake? Now that is an interesting question, Ooh. and. I'll just say, I val. I, even though I look forward to remakes, I'm looking forward to both that Dead Space and Resident Evil Four. I do value new experiences, and Callisto Protocol is gonna be gonna give me experience I haven't had before. So if you had to line it up and say you can only play one of these games, I would probably pick Callisto Protocol because it's new. Hmm. See, I'm I'm of a different opinion. I would I'm more excited about Resident Evil 4 because Capcom is a proven entity, you know. And Capcom is sort of like, yeah, Resident Evil 3 remake was not great. And pro- honestly, I think Resident Evil 3 should have been a DLC for Resident Evil 3 remake. If it was a DLC that was about $20, I would have been totally happy with that. But uh Resident Evil 2 remake was absolutely it was it was amazing. It was practically flawless exactly what i wanted from that remake and i think they'll give resident evil 4 the same care and attention because it's it, resident evil 3 was not a landmark experience for the resident evil franchise but resident evil 2 and resident evil 4 definitely were so i i believe capcom will give the game the attention and respect that it deserves and commands and demands so 
I think, uh, yeah, I'm more excited for Resident Evil 4 because I know I, I kind of feel like Capcom will do that game justice. Whereas Callisto Protocol, while I do sort of like Glenn Schofield, obviously a visionary, I also don't know what kind of budget they've got for that game. I have no idea what the scope's going to be. What if it's going to be like pretty short or something? What if it's like two hours long or something? I don't know. <laughs> so on that end, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, I, I'm having to sort of wait and see. I'm going to wait and see for uh, Callisto Crow Protocol. The trailer looks great, but been burnt before. And I'll just sort of, I'll just, I'll just hope, I'll just have high hopes for that game. But, but yeah, that's me. That's how I mm. feel about it. Grumble Grumble says, Blessing is a pony's pony. I don't know about that. I think bless- Pony Pony. I think Blessing is a pretty, pretty smart guy. I mean, obviously he, he definitely prefers PlayStation, but. I just don't really think they know a lot about Xbox, which, you know, whatever. It's they, You don't have to, you know. It's not like they run, he runs kind of funny X-Cast, but yeah. Um, mm. So if we go from Obsidian, talk about uh, Bethesda Game Studios. I mean, this is a pretty pretty Studio. easy one, right? This is just Starfield. And the only real question is how, long's the, how long is the trailer or demo and where is this pos- positioned in the showcase, right? Yes. So I think Starfield is definitely there, obviously. Oh, snap, son. We've got spammers in the chat. Got to get rid of them. Naked HD fun. They actually no, subscribed. You. Yeah. No, no simps in this chat. Thank you very much. Only games. No simping. Only games. But yeah, uh, Starfield is definitely going to be there. I, I, you know, it's just. Plainly obvious, Starfield's going to be there, and I can pretty much confirm that it's going to be there from from people I've spoke to. So you can expect Starfield at the show. Uh, obviously, you know it's not it's not it's not even worthy of a leak. I mean, it's the the graphics right there in the graphic for the show. It's obviously there. I think we're going to get a Todd Howard classic demo. I think we're going to get a five minute Forza Horizon style long walkthrough gameplay to you know really just lift the lift the veil of mystery over this game and sort of like finally give us sort of an overview of what kind of gameplay features it has i think that's what we get out of starfield that's what i hope we get out of starfield that's not what i know we're getting that's what i hope we get i don't want to see a sort of another sort of scripted you know obscure camera angles teaser like we got before i think we definitely I would hope at least that we get in gameplay and we get in a walkthrough. So yeah, that's my prediction. And I think it closes the show. I think it closes the show with a, with, and I like your idea of a fallout tease sne- sneaking in there afterwards. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm going to say it's in the middle of the show. I'm, unless the Bethesda, yeah. unless the Bethesda game closes the show and then they can have Starfield end it with a Bethesda stinger at the end, but I'm going to say it's in the middle and um. Yeah, I just I don't know how long the demo is gonna be. Five minutes. Maybe we see him. Maybe we see Todd take off from a planet, fly around, fly to another planet, do some missions, do some shooting or something, and then that's it. Do you think we get a date outside of twenty twenty three? Do you think they date it again? I don't think they're dated again because I think that's risky. If you get two, if you get two date pushes, I think that's sort of risky. So yeah. I think they'll just say twenty twenty three. Okay, so next up we have Arcane. So they just released Ghostwire Tokyo in March. They also released Deathloop last year. Now, the likeliest candidate is a trailer for Kane. Deathloop. What? Arcane didn't release Ghostwire Tokyo. What oh, no, mean? yeah. I'm, my bad. <laughs> uh, that was Tango Gameworks. <laughs> I'm just. They, Arcane released Deathloop last year, uh, and they also revealed Redfall. They ended the show with the CGI trailer. Redfall got delayed. Yeah. So clearly, I think you can count on Redfall being at the show. I could see Redfall even opening the show, honestly. Like a vow or like Redfall opening Redfall up the show. Open, yeah. Either one of those. I think Redfall could open the show. But I also think like I think Redfall is sort of like I think Redfall's the game that we wouldn't get full blown gameplay demo for, possibly. I think like Redfall is probably more of a another trailer sort of thing, not CGI, maybe an engine show like some rapid gameplay footage. Um, I think that's probably more likely for Redfall because I think they're still probably trying to find 
a sort of sweet spot for that game in some way. But um, but yeah, I think it could open the show. I want I want to believe that. Yeah, so I think I'm it. Intrigued. I think there's a good chance it opens. But do we see anything else other than the Redfall? Do we see Deathloop? Do we know Death if Deathloop is going to come in September? Day one on Game Pass. Do they? Do we see one of their other projects, or is it just is just Redfall? Uh, I think it's probably just Redfall, and maybe that maybe they announce Deathloop's. Well, I don't know. Deathloop's weird because maybe Sony still maybe they can't talk about Deathloop at all until the the deal's fully run its course. So maybe they don't even mention Deathloop. You know, um, we know Deathloop will obviously coming obviously coming to Xbox, but I think that'll just appear later in the year. I don't think we'll see it at the show, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, I think it's going to be Redfall, and I don't think we see anything else from Arcane. I think it's just going to be Redfall. I That's agree. My I agree. I could be wrong. Uh, Compulsion Games, you leak their Project Midnight, which tell us about Project Midnight again to refresh people's memories. So, from what we know about Project Midnight, it's a third-person action game with female protagonist. Some of the enemies we've seen look sort of like they look like harpy monsters with bird wings. Uh, it's sort of inspired by uh, I don't know what you call it. Sort of Louisiana folklore and stuff like that. So like swamps probably going to be crocodiles and stuff like that and wetlands and um. But it sounds like there's going to be a lot of writing in the game because uh, some of the concept art that they posted before certainly hints that it's going to be maybe a bit broader than uh, um than the the teaser concept art that I posted. So um. Could it be at the show? I honestly don't know because I've only seen concept footage of it and I, it's kind of like, do I know um, do I know what phase of development's in? Is it early on? Is it later on? And stuff like that. I think there's a good chance it might not be there. I think maybe that's later on. I don't think maybe it's ready to be shown off yet, but I could be wrong. Um I think Compulsion's one studio that they're going to spend a lot of time building up because they were pretty small when they started. And I think Microsoft clearly thought they had an X factor and they had like new ideas and they want to build them up to like get them to the next level and let sort of get them to a point where they can make these sort of bigger games. So I think, I think it's not there, but I could be wrong. What do you think? Uh, I think it's, I think it's at the show. Think it's at the show. I think it's. They, yeah. I think they use the CGI trailer to announce it. And I, yeah, I think I, I think it's there. I think it's there. Hmm. So I've heard that this show is going to be have a very heavy emphasis on gameplay, and well, that there may be an emphasis on I gameplay. Mean, that doesn't mean they can't show a CGI trailer. Yeah, I guess, but. But what if there's other things that they want to show of CGI? And maybe they're just like, yeah, well, we could save this CGI trailer for another show. I don't know. But, but yeah, maybe you're right. I hope you're right, because I want to see what Compulsion's getting up to and what their, what the next level for them looks like. I think that would be cool. Um, Let's see, what else? What other studios we guess we got to talk about here? Um... Uh, Zenimax Online. So we don't know what they're mm. working on, other than uh, them saying it's a new IP, it's a AAA game, essentially. New IP. So <clears throat> I think, like, if there's a new IP, I mean, man, how are we gonna guess that, right? Well, if I'm it's not, not I'm like Elder Scrolls, if it's not Fallout, then what the hell is it? Yeah, I'm not saying we need to guess what the game is. It's just a question of will they show up and show what they're working on? I think I'm going to guess yes. I think we have we haven't seen much from ZeniMax for a while, online studios, and the fact that they sort of they already put this project out there, I think this is a point where maybe they want to put the game out there in more broad terms so they can start hiring and you know build that up. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm going to say yes. I think we'll see Zenimax at the show because I have heard that Bethesda is doing a lot of the heavy lifting at the show. So I think, yeah, I think we'll see that, but I have no idea what it possibly could be. I just hope that they, they end up with a better engine for it because 
Elder Scrolls Online's engine is how do I put this? Kind of floaty. It's floaty. I don't really like it. It doesn't feel good to play. So, like, if they are making a new MMO, I would hope that they sort of make an engine that just feels better to use because the engine they've got right now for Elder Scrolls is not good um, for me, personally. I know a lot of people like that game, but it, it just feels horrible to play. I just can't stand the engine. So I would hope they make something that, I don't know, I feel like they got hamstrung a lot with Elder Scrolls because I, I kind of feel like they, they felt they had to make the combat feel like Oblivion, basically. And because of that, they purposefully made it floaty. So maybe if like they, they have like a, a new IP they can work with, they can try something that's actually like actually feels good to play. <laughs> so I don't think Oblivion's combat is... I really don't think Oblivion's combat works in an MMO setting. I just don't. So... Yeah, I hope we see them, and it's intriguing to think about. Uh, I also. But you're not an MMO guy, right? No, I'm not an MMO guy. So you you firmly believe that this is an MMO and not like a regular game? Yeah, I think we could see that. Well, do you do you believe it's an MMO? I think it probably is an MMO. The studio is literally called Zenimax Online Studios, and I don't think you call your studio that if you don't make online games. Maybe it could be something else. Maybe it could be something smaller. Maybe they're making a MOBA or something like that. I don't know. Or an isometric game, a Diablo clone. or could be anything. could be anything. I just want to see what they're capable of outside of the, you know, the very sort of narrow scope they had for the Elder Scrolls MMO. Because they basically just had to sort of follow exactly the expectations set out for the Elder Scrolls universe. Yeah. So yeah, create every unleash. Let's see what they can do. I also agree with you. I think I think we see a trailer for for their game. I don't know what it could be. Yeah. You know, rumors that they're working on like a Disney property or like Star Wars or something. I don't know. Those rumors always keep on popping up. I don't know what it is, but I I do think we will see it at the show. So moving on from Zenimax Online, uh, Double Fine. I think this is a pretty quick one. They just ship Psychonauts two. I don't think they're at the show. So I don't think they're at the show either. Do you believe that there? I've seen some of these rumors that say you know Banjo is uh being is is Double Fine is going to be the one making making Banjo like a Banjo remake. But I would be absolutely shocked if Double Fine's making Banjo. I don't think they're making Banjo, and I have no idea where that rumor came from. Yeah. I think I they saw it. I think banjo. I saw it on Reset Air or something. Yeah, they ain't making banjo. Um. So, it's software makers of Doom. You know, there's a. Eh, like I guess there's a there's a chance. Like the rumors that they're making a Quake, which is nah, not something I'm super interested in. And I I always like Doom more than Quake. Although I guess I could like Quake depending on how they modernize it. Um, do we see id at the showcase? I'll just give my answer. I don't think we see id yet. I think they're I don't think they're at a stage yet they can show it. So I'm gonna say no. <clears throat> I'm gonna say no too. And the reason for that is I think like Quake if they are making Quake, and it kind of makes sense to 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 give Quake the Doom treatment. I kind of feel like Quake really needs a long time in the sort of concepting out sort of phase to figure out how to differentiate it from Doom. Because Doom, Quake was meant to be a successor to Doom. And it basically, it's identical to Doom in a lot of ways. It's got like the demonic imagery, you fight demon, demonic entities and monsters and stuff like that. I think like in the, in the modern era, Quake would have a sort of, uncanny level of overlap with doom that would border on being confusing so for me i would expect that quake a modernized take on quake would probably be very different and i think they probably need a while longer period to figure out that than they might have needed between doom eternal and doom 2016 so if you're making a sequel to a game you pretty much know all the stuff that you're doing for it, right? You've got all the assets and stuff like that. 
like Doom Doom Eternal recycled a lot of the assets from Doom 2016 and maybe just tweaked or like up leveled them and tweaked them a bit here and there. But if you're making a whole new universe, it probably takes a little bit longer. So I'm gonna say no, they're not there. But I hope I'm wrong because I want to see what they're working on because they're a pretty damn legendary studio, frankly. Yeah, I'm I'm with uh, Dagger Man in chat, uh, Danger Man, who says double down on the Lovecrafty and stuff. Yeah, I mean Bloodborne pretty much showed us what a modern Lovecraftian game should look like, and if it if it's all along those lines, that'd just be sick. So it's interesting to think about. Uh, George in the super chat says compulsion can have gameplay spliced in a trailer. Uh, I mean they can. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Ball Forever says, how long do you guys think the Xbox show will be? Maybe... 90 minutes. Yeah, I think maybe hour 40. Maybe maybe a little extra. But yeah, 90 minutes. I think minutes they should make it four hours long. Four hours? Just reveal everything? Just four hours long. Give give every game, like, 15 minutes. Do it. Mm. Yolo it, man. I'll watch the whole damn thing. Uh, Ultra Watts says, <laughs> Coke said banjo remake is this true i guess he means cult um oh at the showcase was cult uh, i mean cult cult did, i think cult was cult, cult did, just repeat repeating what reset ever said or something i mean i don't know i don't know um, i don't think banjo's there i'm just putting that out there right now i don't think banjo's at the showcase yeah but i could be wrong maybe cult's right Ralph Wiggum says, you guys are awesome. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ultra Watt says, I think Killer Instinct 2 would be a killer end of the show. You? Yeah. I mean, they could... Um, I could... It, yeah, if you're talking about like a really cool way to end a show, Killer Instinct 2 would definitely be super fan service-y. Yeah, um, it would be. But even if, it, even if it's real, I, I'm not sure you'd announce it now. So... Um, I think think what other studios we got here to talk about still so we did double fine uh we did it tango gameworks i mean they just they just released ghostwire tokyo and even yeah though, even though we know <clears throat> tango is not there yeah even though we know they have another game they've talked about it one of their directors is making a game that's as far away from horror as possible which probably means some action game i doubt that's you know they're gonna reveal it so i don't think tango's there and then you got roundhouse which is like the wild card of the bethesda group uh we have no idea what they're working on and i don't think they show up either personally um but x back to xbox game studios in exile jazz you had leaked their project cobalt which is like a steampunk rpg fps do you think we get an announcement for it? Uh, yeah, I think Cobalt's there, personally. Like, the in Exile have been very, very vocal on Twitter lately, and I, th- I can sort of feel the excitement from that team. So I think Cobalt's there. Yeah, I actually, I, I actually agree with you. I think, I think we see a see a announcement trailer for 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 Cobalt and with the name out there and see what it's all about. I'm actually excited to see what it is because. Everybody tells me how great the studio is, but a lot of their games they've released don't really appeal to me. But I would totally be down to play a steampunk FPS. So, uh, Ninja Theory. This is this is one that's uh, this this one's near and dear to my heart because you know how much I love Hellblade, and it's very difficult for me to come to an, a conclusion on this one simply because. I think Hellblade 2 is next year. And if it's next year, you would think it's at the showcase showing off like story trailer with combat and all that stuff, right? But they just showed it off at the Game Awards, so it makes me doubt that they would once again so soon show it off. So I'm going to say no. I'm going to say Hellblade 2 is not at the showcase. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I hope that it is, because I, I want to see it again. I don't want to see, uh, you know, combat gameplay, story stuff. I want to see the trailer end with 2023. But I just got to keep in mind that Microsoft's going to be at Gamescom. 
there's still game awards at the end of this year. You know, we know they're hiring positions for for people to like maybe essentially do more events, which we've always talked about how Microsoft needs to do more events instead of relying on one big event. And maybe we get that next okay. year, uh, depending on Hellblade 2, which could maybe be the big holiday game next year. Um, so maybe they maybe they hold on to it. But I really want to see it, and I just... I'm just gonna say we don't see it though. Uh, I don't. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say they hold on to it <laughs> and we don't see it. Yeah. But you're you're right. a Hellblade hater though, so I mean. Yeah, I just I just I think you you need exciting games at an event, not walking simulators. You know. No. <sighs> All right. I hate I, I hate you with this walking <laughs> simulator stuff. Um. Uh. Project Mara. Could Project Mara be there? That's the other game they're working on. I don't think so. I think they're I think they're all hands on deck with, with Hellblade 2 getting that ready. And I think my Project Mara development probably won't spin up until a bit later. But could be wrong. Could be wrong. But yeah, I think I think we, we see Hellblade at the Game Awards. Because like the, it's almost become a tradition now. And the expectations kind of been set. So maybe maybe even Jeff like paid exclusivity to reveal everything about Hellblade because he specifically really likes likes it. I don't know. That is but. true. Uh, Face in the super chat says, "All jokes aside, Rand's prediction was too specific. So I'm happy Xbox fans get to play Final Fantasy VII remake. But do people really care two years later? I mean, some people will care. People will care." Uh, and my prediction wasn't, be a big month wasn't too specific. I don't know. I don't know what you mean by too specific. All I'm saying is literally, it's coming. It's on Game Pass, and it's day one. It, it's it, and it's also going to shadow drop. You know, I don't know how that's too specific. It's not. That's not that specific. Look, you can. Everybody can believe what you want. You, <laughs> you can believe that somehow oh, I, I know this. Whatever. Back, pet- no, yeah. no, 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 no. Runs back backpedaling on his prediction. I'm though. not backpedaling. Hang I on, said man. it. Hang on, hang on. I thought I thought I thought I thought we weren't being I thought we weren't being uh waffling, Brandon. I'm not waffling. It sounds a bit like waffling. I'm not it sounds like waffling I'm to me, man. Absolutely not waffling. It sounds like waffling. It sounds, you're it the one like, you're like... the one's been waffling the whole show. <laughs> yeah, you you're the one who's like, oh it's it's just a fun prediction, guys. It is. That sounds a bit like waffling to me, man. It's so when it's wrong dodging them bullets. When Final Fantasy Seven when Final Fantasy Seven remake doesn't even show up <laughs> and never comes to Xbox. What are you gonna yeah. say to me then? <laughs> Oh, I guess it really was just. I'm gonna a fun say prediction. it's all it's all your fault. Yeah. It's all your fault. You jinxed it. I guess it's, I did. It's gonna be all your fault, man. I guess I guess I jinxed it. Uh, <laughs> Hargi Chani has been a member for seven months. Says event is scheduled for 9:40 a.m. Pacific time. Fans welcome featuring hosts Malik Prince and Kelly Lombardi. 10 a.m. Pacific showcase. 11:30 a.m. Pacific fan fest activities. Yeah, so I mean, hour and a half, which is what the calendar said. So. You know, there's always a chance maybe it goes a couple minutes, a couple minutes over. Uh, Old Taco says, couldn't catch this live, so I'll just watch the VOD afterwards. Yes, thank you. It's always uh, it's up on, always up on YouTube afterwards for you to watch or download on Spotify or Google Play, iTunes, which if you're it's listening that way, emoji. you can always uh, do us a big favor and, uh, you know, give us a five-star review. And like the show, if you're, if you're still watching on YouTube... We're three hours in essentially, and there's still fifteen hundred of you, fifteen hundred of you here, which is incredible. Watching my really bad Halo gameplay because I just didn't care and needed footage, because uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a god. Um, yeah, you do us a favor, like the show. <laughs> we have like seven hundred and sixty-four likes. Man, could could we approach like nine hundred by the end of the show? That'd be uh, that'd be incredible. Damn, over um, nine thousand. Yeah. We still uh we feed we feed in the chat waffles, man. To see those waffle emojis in, waffles. in chat. Yeah, we see we're feeding we're feeding some serving some waffles on this show. Yeah. Uh, Jockman <laughs> says you two pinks are still on. What are your favorite bands or are are and or artist? Oh jeez, that's Ooh, that's you, that's a broad question. That is very broad. You go ahead and answer that, Jez. 
I mean, the first thing that came, I like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bands, you know, like uh, it depends on my mood. But the first band that come, came to mind right now was Mastodon. Mastodon. Any Mastodon fans in chat? Mm. Mastodon metal band, man. Mm. Uh, Mastodon, I really like Deftones. I always come back to Deftones. I really like Gojira. I like metal, man. Like, I'm, I'm all about that metal, you know. But I also like a lot of alternative music. I really like uh, the Young Knives. I really love this British band called the Young Knives. So everyone should go and listen to them. I like electronic music. I really like the Chemical Brothers. Listen to a lot of them. I like Radiohead. Every single Radiohead album, and they can uh, satisfy several tastes all at once. But Rand, do you do you have any favorite band picks just dropping out there right now? I mean, the chat? like you, it's also based Off on my mood. Head. You know, I'm a I'm a child of the '90s, essentially. You know. That's when I discovered music. Yeah. So, like, I'm a big fan of, you know, the grunge era, like Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, Alice in Chains is a big one of mine, too. You know, Met- Metallica, Slipknot, Megadeth. Uh, yeah. You know, I was I in, in my rebellious sometimes. in my rebellious high school phase. I was also a big fan of Marilyn Manson. Uh, you know when he when he did Antichrist Superstar and Mechanical Animals, uh, because that made my, oh Mechanical cause, Animals because that because that made my mom all pissed off because my mom read like the Time Magazine thing where it was just like oh my god and I, so I like got into Marilyn Manson and it freaked her out, which is which is great. <laughs> um, oh, but I didn't man. like dress up emo. I just I just I don't know. Uh, but like I also like you know some of the older stuff like Led Zeppelin and uh, Pink Floyd. The Who, I mean, it really just depends. I mean, hell, like I'm, a, I also kind of like Taylor Swift, mainly because my sister used to listen to that all the time. Taylor Swift, T Swizzle, baby, bro, you can't go wrong with T no, Swizzle. Yeah, no. dude, you can't, you can't say, put Slipknot and Taylor Swift in the same. Well, yeah, I, can, I can do that. Well, oh, no, nobody, nobody says dude, I can't. Dude, that that is worse than my Kardashians thing. Man. No, it's not. What the hell is wrong with you? I'm just saying it depends on the mood. And like I said, my sister, my sister would be listening to it all the time to the point where like I actually grow to appreciate it. You know what I'm saying, dude? That is that is shocking. I gotta I gotta like cue up some sepultura now just to palate cleanse what you just said. (laughs) I mean, I I can I can go from listening from Slipknot and Mudvayne and stuff to then listening to Blank Space from to Taylor Swift. You know, me, me and Cole, me, me and Cole Eastwood both love Taylor Swift. I don't care what anybody says; it's guilty pleasure. Okay. I just wondering if, like, you you were trying to search for Corey Taylor and you accidentally searched for Taylor Swift at some point. Oh man, I don't know. Well, that was the that super chat went wrong. Pretty that that super chat went down south pretty quick. No, it didn't. Uh, system, uh, system of Down, Static X. Fear Factory. I'm just looking for my my list of list of bands now. Let's just let's just turn this into a music podcast now. Music podcast, yeah. Class, yeah. Classic Cradle of Filth, yeah, baby. All about that. Everyone's <laughs> idol, Goro. Rand, Elden Ring isn't even that hard. It's not. Also, Rand you can't cross the bridge in Halo. Mm. <laughs> How funny! How funny are you guys? Oh, Elden Ring was was really easy though. So, I, but I also died from falling in Elden Ring. It's not like I didn't die. I died, died a lot. Um, my brother one shotted Melania or whatever her name is in um, what's her name? Melina, Melania. I don't know. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, yes, right? I know, I know who you're my talking bro- about. Yes, my brother killed her on his first try. Like, and he wasn't even that high level. Do you know who did it? No. Oh. He used this. He used this build where you can just use a shield and then just poke with a spear, and you don't even need to stop blocking. And he just he just poked her to death with a, with a spear. Mm. <laughs> it's the cheesiest, the cheesiest murder kill I've ever seen. So you can break, you can really break Elden Ring if you use the right abilities and stuff. But I kind of think that's one of the cool things about it. Yeah, you know, we just we just went off on a wild tangent. We did from we Tyler did. Tyler Swift to Elden Ring. So, uh, I wonder if Tyler Swift played Elden Ring. Redfield says, uh, "Any crazy predictions? Wishes? I mean, she's 
we, we were out there. Final Fantasy VII, Fallout games, Banjo Kazooie's. You know, there's plenty of stuff. Scalebound. Scalebound ending the show with platinum. James Riggs says Taylor Taylor Swift is better than Mastodon. Ooh, ooh. There you go, Jazz. That one's for you. Jeez. Um. Jeez. That's Inex- so let's talk about okay. initiative. They had a lot of turnover this year. Crystal Dynamics is working That's on the good. game. Half the studios left from the original people. <laughs> uh, do we see Perfect Dark at the show? No. I agree with you. I, I do not. No. I do not think we see Perfect Dark. All right. I think Perfect Dark's that's, a long way off. That's a quick I one. I that too early. Playground Games. Well, this is an interesting one. I do think Playground Games is going to be there. However, oh. I don't think we see Fable. I think Fable and Perfect Dark show up at next year's show because I think they're 2024, 2025 games, essentially. However, I Playground's going to be there showing off the first expansion for Forza Horizon 5. That's what I think. Let's do, let's do some crazy predictions about what the theme of that could be. Do you think it's just going to be sort of grounded theme showing off like a new area of... Uh, yeah, because you know, the uh, first expansions know, for Forza Horizon Mexico is... Mexico and stuff. The first expansion for Forza Horizon are always very straightforward. Uh, it's the mm. second one that's always the crazy one. So, yeah, it'll probably be a new island or a new space somewhere. Uh, that's the thing. I don't even know what it possibly could be. So mm. I just expect to see it. Uh, uh, George says they're not showing any games according to your predictions. What are you talking about? We said Indiana Jones is going to be there. Starfield and Redfall. Zenimax Online is going to announce something. Uh, Obsidian is going to have three games. Com- I said Compulsion is going to be there. Uh, we both said In Exile is going to announce their new game. Uh, I think we're split on Ninja Theory. Playground's gonna have their DLC. I mean, what do you mean? <laughs> There's just <laughs> what we said. Like, Id's not ready. Tango's not ready because they just released something. Arcane's not ready. Well, Arcane's showing Redfall. Um, we don't know what Roundhouse is doing. Three four three. I mean, they were doing ha- Halo Infinite, but we don't think it's gonna show up. Coalition could be there. I mean, hell, like. The Gears collection uh, might be might be real. I don't want it to be real because I don't want the Gears collection, but that very well could be be true. So the Coalition could show up, uh, or even with their their other project, uh, Double Fine just released something, so I doubt they're ready to show anything. The Initiative is the perfect dark stuff, so I doubt they're you know ready either. I mean, I hope I'm wrong about Ninja Theory. So I mean, I don't know what do you mean by like. <laughs> Didn't, we said none of these games are showing up. We've like literally named, I don't know, like six or seven. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, Rare. I guess the, the one for, I mean, Rare, they have Everwild, but it, that game's going through changes, shall we, shall we say. So I don't expect uh-huh. it. They've already showed off Everwild twice, by the way. Once in 2019 and once in 2020. Uh, the question is, does Sea of Thieves show up? Jez, what do you think? Sea of Thieves. I suppose like they have just launched a fairly significant update for Sea of Thieves. So maybe Sea of Thieves skips because they've just launched an update. And maybe Sea of Thieves' next major update will line up with next year's show. Um... I mean, obviously, they're, they're going to do other updates and stuff, but, like, they, they seem to sort of do these sort of, like, they do one, they do a, f- a few smaller updates, and then they have, like, these massive blowout updates. So maybe next year's massive blowout update lines up with next year, but I don't think Sea of Thieves will be there. Maybe we just don't see Rare this year, and um, they just work quietly working on cool stuff, but I could be wrong, you know. Uh, Rare is one of the studios that has been growing, so maybe they come with a, a sort of reminder about the the new con the content they launched recently and maybe tease a smaller update or something but i don't know i don't think we'll see that and i certainly don't think we'll see everworld there i think everworld's like a fairly i think everworld's a longer way off but and and i we haven't even talked about like 
global publishing. You know, Contraband, which I think yeah. both me and Jez believe is going to be there. Uh, Project Belfry, which we both believe is going to be there and launching soon. Maybe this year, maybe early next yeah. year. Uh, there's Project Indus. And what was the other game that you also think is ready, Jez? Uh, for... I I think we could see Project Chinook there as well. Yeah. Um. So I mean, like when you add it all up, I mean, there's quite quite a quite a bit. And we haven't even said like you got Mojang. I mean, I don't know if Mojang is going to be there. They got they got Minecraft, but like I think they have another another project, right? You you mentioned before, like another Minecraft. Yeah, game? there's. Yeah, there might be another Minecraft spinoff, but. Who knows if that actually comes to fruition or not? Yeah, because I would love does to see Mo. <laughs> yeah, Mojang. You know, Mojang just does whatever it wants. Yeah, I I would love to see them say, "Here's a Series S and X update, and it's got ray tracing and shit." But at the same time, my expectations for them is pretty low. <laughs> so maybe not. Um, they did just launch the uh, the wild update for Minecraft, which added a bunch of new biomes and new mobs and stuff. So. You know, it's not like they probably don't have any content to show from a gameplay perspective, but I wouldn't say no to them finally announcing shaders for, you know, Microsoft's flagship consoles, which Minecraft doesn't support for some reason. Um, that would sure be nice, but yeah. Yeah. Maybe sometimes you just, you can't get, you can't even get your own studios to support your console, right? you know. And then there's there's turn ten, <laughs> which is gonna have Forza Motorsport. So that's another game. I mean, I I don't know how many of it is now, but that's quite a, quite a lot. I mean, not every studio yeah. is gonna have something to show, you know. So, and Forza Motorsport has a very good likelihood of launching this year, you know. So if you look at like 2022 releases, it'd be like Forza Motorsport, probably Josh Sawyer's game, Grounded 1.0 release, Deathloop coming in September, presumably. Project Belfry potentially launching this year. So, yeah. yeah. I think Belfry will be there this year. And then there's Undead Labs, who are doing State of the K3, which, you know, I heard Jeff Grubb said today that he thinks it's going to be there. I don't think State of the K3 is going to be there, but, you know, these are all just predictions anyways. So, I mean, how do you what do you feel about Undead Labs, Jez? I think State of the K3 could be there. And do you know why? Why? Because I've heard that another studio has taken over development of State of Decay 2. Oh, really? Yeah, so, like, you know, State of Decay 2 gets a, lot, a weird amount of updates for, like, a game that has no microtransactions. And I found out recently the reason it's still getting updates is because another studio has taken over development, which means that, yeah, there might be a few devs from, State, from One Dead Labs working on State of Decay 2, like producers and stuff like that. But I think a lot of it's being handled by a second party. So I think there's a good chance State of the K3 could be there. But there's also, a, from what I've heard, is that State of the K2 still has more updates coming as well, which is wild to think about. So um, I honestly... I want to believe State of Decay 3 is there, but I could see it go either way for that one because State of Decay 2 um, is still going on um, and it still continues. So uh, Navy in chat says Valkyrie Entertainment has been doing updates. So maybe it's already out there in public, but um, and I just didn't know over it. Yeah, it's, inter it's interesting. State of Decay is such an interesting sort of platform. They have a lot of dedicated fans. It has a, ver a very dedicated player base, that game. And all without microtransactions or any sort of pay, paid monetization. I want to believe State of the K3 will be there and we'll see it, but I think I, I would, I don't know. Maybe it'll be there, but part of me thinks maybe you're right and it'll be next year. But yeah. Uh, I, want to, I want to hope so because I'm, I, I really, that's one of the games I really want to see get to the next level. Yeah, so do I. It needs to really differentiate itself from State of Decay 2. Uh, Jonas, the dad, says, yeah. what studio shows up you're not expecting? Hmm. Well, I mean, I'm not expecting Ninja Theory to show up, so I hope I hope that's a studio that shows up with Hellblade 2. That would make my, that would make my day. 
That definitely, that definitely works. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not expecting Fallout to be there, but I just hope that it does in some way. So whoever works on Fallout these days. And then plus there's going to be indie games with have Game Pass deals. Probably be third-party games. I couldn't tell you which ones they are. They're always crapshoot to talk about which games Microsoft has, you know, the marketing deals for. So the whole show's not all just going to be just all Xbox's first party and, and deals and stuff. There'll definitely be other things there. World's Edge. I think me and Jez would agree that uh, they'll be there with uh, the console port for Age of Empires 4, right? Yeah, I think I think the console port for 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 2022 is probably a lock. I think it's probably maybe ready to go. I also think they'll be there talking about Project Chinook, maybe, mm. which they are co-developing, from what I understand. Uh, and Don Derrickson says, "Love the show." Will Goldeneye? Will Goldeneye be shown? Well, now, this is interesting. I don't know anything about this, but there might be some hints that it could be shown. And maybe that's Rare's presence or something. I mean, I it is know. a it is Rare's game, right? And the 25th anniversary is in August, so if there's not any issue releasing it because of the U- Ukraine Russia war, then you announce it at the showcase and then you date it for August. Release it on the 25th anniversary and boom, boom. And then Nick can be happy. He can be like this game of the year and everybody that wants to play this 25 year old game can be excited, but don't come crying to me after you play it for 20 minutes and says, man, this wasn't as good as I thought. Yeah. You think you think it wasn't as good <laughs> as your 15 year old self remembered? No one. Jeez. I'm shocked. You know? Yeah. That game is not going to be of aged well. I don't want to see Golden Eye at the event because it's old and bad. Mm. Old and bad. What about okay. um? What about uh? <laughs> you also talked earlier this year about an Xbox uh, Game Pass family plan. Do you think that's announced during the showcase, or is that maybe announced later in the year, Xbox Wire blog or something? I think I think the family plan could very well be there, either at the show itself or announcing a blog post alongside you know updates that they're delivering. I think yeah, I personally for me, Game Pass family plan is there. Maybe even other Game Pass tiers because the Fortnite Fortnite going straight into XCloud has really changed the 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 sort of the dynamic for XCloud. You know, uh, XCloud is blowing up in markets where access to consoles is not that great for either because they're too expensive due to taxes or either because, um, you know, uh, the tariffs or trade and all that sort of stuff, you know? So I think that we could even see a cloud only subscription that's maybe a little bit cheaper than playing for Game Pass Ultimate. Maybe more competitive with whatever Stadia charges or whatever, um, or get a, a GeForce now. So yeah, I do think that we get Game Pass updates at the show, either at the show itself or in a blog post. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's going to be one of my predictions. So I mean, we've been going for quite some time. I think that's all the studios, all the stuff. So we'll take some questions because it's getting late for Jazz. And I want to thank everybody for being here. This is the end of the normal show. If you guys would do us a big favor, make sure you hit the like button. We're almost at 900. That would be amazing if we could get there. Still three and a half hours in, and there's still like 1,300 people watching, which is incredible. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much, guys. All the lurkers, everybody chatting, all the super chats. If you're listening to this later, we love you just as much. Thank you guys so much for all the support. And uh, even you, idle sloth, I see you still tweeting out everything we're <laughs> saying on the show. Um, he just tweeted out about what I said about Fallout. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna retweet it. Oh, jeez, please don't! <laughs> I don't need any extra any, any extra attention. I don't want any extra attention. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna tweet it with insider confirmed. No, don't you dare! Don't you dare! So, oh yeah, 
There we go. Hit the like button. Subscribe <laughs> if you're new. We'll be back next week with hopefully people, you know, from the community. I'm going to ask some people around, get some people in here talking about what they expect and what they hope for the future of Xbox and all that stuff. It'll be it'll be a nice nice party. It'll be fun. Um, Redfield1337 says, Elite 3 controller with adaptive, adaptive triggers like the PS5? Maybe. I don't think they'll do adaptive triggers. I think they'll do the haptic feedback first. Uh, Coco El Rocco mm-hmm. says, I own interactive certain affinity question mark. I don't think, I don't think project dragon shows up, but I guess it's possible. James Bond shows up, right? Jez? I owes other uh, new game. They got the James Bond game. Maybe that shows up. I don't, it's not exclusive, yeah. but it's possible. I mean, it's not exclusive. Certain affinity. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. Oh, Project Suerte, the 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 Monster Hunter game. I don't I don't think that's gonna show up. I think they could announce Suerte with a CGI trailer, so they can be like, so they can start hiring for it. Because mm. presumably, you know, Suerte is an exclusive, and that could be one of global global publishing announcements and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think Suerte could be there. I think Tatankam possibly isn't there, most likely. But I think Swerte could be there yeah. as, a, as an announcement rather than gameplay. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Rick Gaffney wants to know if, we're, if I'm going to be having a watch-along. Yes, I'll probably do exactly what I did last year while I stream the show. And we can all watch together as my Final Fantasy VII prediction comes false. And everybody can laugh at me. And I can <laughs> once again put to the rest that my predictions are just really just that. They're just predictions. So... Right. You know, uh, Widia says, Jez, what do you think of Brad Sam's assertion that Keystone will be solely or mainly software based? What does that mean? I mean, Brad put out a video I yesterday don't... about Keystone. I didn't watch it, but Widia says that or at least Brad saying Keystone will be solely or mainly software based. I don't, I don't know what that means. It won't be a device. It's definitely a device. It's not an app. Oh, do you mean that it's just cloud-based and that it doesn't have any sort of native capabilities? I, I'm not. I'm not sure what you mean. Can you clarify, mate? Just clarify in the chat. You don't have to super chat again. Just, just clarify what you mean. Is it going to be? What do you mean by that? Yeah, let's take. Let's see if he replies and take some other questions. Because uh, I can tell you right now, it's 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 a device. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not just an app. Uh, the Chop 808 says, with delays, do you see any big third-party Game Pass pickups for the holidays, like Callisto Protocol? I mean, yeah, that's what everybody talks about. Like, Microsoft has to make up for the Starfield and Redfall delays. The problem is, yeah. Modern Warfare 2 can't do that because it's got Sony marketing. Harry Potter's got Sony marketing. Looks like Callisto Protocol's got Sony marketing. So, like, those are three games right there off, you know, that you can't. The only other game that we really know about for the holidays is Gotham Knights. Which I guess it's possible, but I don't really see them announcing a Game Pass partnership this far out. I mean, they they could do it maybe like a couple weeks before the game releases. And who knows, that game may still get delayed. Uh, it's tough because I'm I'm I don't really think third parties want to do, especially the big ones want to do day one Game Pass stuff at least far in advance. And we've only seen it done with Outriders, uh, MLB The Show, and Back for Blood. Uh, I guess like Sniper Elite 5. Well, Plague, Plague's Tale, Requiem as well, which was announced like a year in advance. But for the most part, you really don't see it that often. So unless Microsoft goes to one of these publishers with like a big check, then I'm going to say no. But that's not to say it couldn't happen as we get closer to these release dates. Plus, I don't even know what else is releasing this fall. So I- yeah, like m- one of my one of my crazy predictions on uh, defining Duke was that Diablo launches this year and it launches straight into Game Pass. Yes, but that's more of a hope than a prediction because I don't think that'll really happen. But it would be pretty cool if it did, right? That would be pretty cool. Right? It would be pretty cool. Pushing Polygon. Well, yeah. we did say Diablo 4 is going to be there. So, Pushing Polygon says, do you guys think that Microsoft makes anything of their deal with limited run games this year? 
Um, uh, so limited run, they make, they do physical editions of direct to digital games, right? Usually. Yes, yes. That's what they do. So like what direct to digital games does Xbox have that they could even attach? I don't know. I don't really know much about limited I mean, run games. They, so I I think they, they said they make collector's editions of and stuff. Yeah, but I don't I guess some of the like like tunic and stuff could get stuff, but um that's not even exclusive. That's been announced for PlayStation. Oh, now, so. well, yeah, I don't know what he means by Microsoft making anything of their deal with limited run games. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, Horizon Herb says Square Enix has filed three new trademarks in Japan: Final Fantasy VII Remake, Integrate, Final Barline, and Labyrinth Striker. I did not know that. Oh. Uh, Doom Reaper says Jazz, who's more likely to step on the Xbox stage, Kojima or Ed Boon? Oh, that is interesting. That's an interesting one. I think this year, probably Kojima, frankly. But I don't think either of them will, to mm-hmm. be honest. Jason Dill says, but... Rand, what are the chances we've seen Elite Series controller announcement? I think that I think I think that announcement's next year, personally. Um Yeah, I think that's next year too. George says, Jez, I'll be disappointed if State of Decay 3 is there, but not Fable. Fable has been dev longer and has had a smoother development than State of Decay 3, according to you, Jez. Who said that? George. Georgie. Wait, what? Georgie. What was the question again? He said, it's not really a question. He just says he'd be disappointed if State of Decay 3 is at the show, but not Fable. Because Fable has been in dev longer. Oh. Smoother development. Well... Yeah. I don't I no no no. I think like the thing about State of Decay 3, right? They know exactly what kind of game they're making. With State of Decay 3, you're basically just making State of Decay 2, but better. So I think the development of State of Decay 3 is potentially more simple than the development of Fable, which is a studio that has never made that kind of game before, with like having to hire people who haven't worked together before and building up a new studio culture. So I don't think it's fair to say that because Fable's been in development for longer, or at least announced for longer, that it it comes before State of Decay 3. Because I think State of Decay 3's development pipeline is potentially less bumpy because the studio culture's already in place, the development pipelines are in place, the code for a lot of the underlying systems is probably already done, you know. So I think, like, I don't think it's fair to to do that so i think state of the k3 could be is probably going to come before fable for me so i think fable is like going to be a more complicated game it's going to have a bigger bigger scope and they've got to work out they've got to work out what it looks like they're making a game from scratch everything from scratch and not just like they're not just building up the world and the graphics they're literally rebooting the entire franchise so Whereas State of Decay 3, they already know exactly what they're making. They're just making State of Decay 2 but better. So, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Rand, I just want to I just want to loop back around to Widya, who okay. Widya got in touch and he said, Brad Sam says he believes that manufacturing a puck is too expensive and it's going to only be TV apps or utilizing Roku or Fire Sticks to deliver Keystone. I think that, I love Brad. I love Brad, but that's wrong. The Keystone is a console and it's definitely going to come out. It's not, um, it's not a console. It's a device, right? It's a console. I mean, what what they refer to internally is a streaming console. Oh, okay. For them, for it's not a stick. It's not a puck. It's a small. It's a small console, basically. It's something that will sit under your TV, very small and stuff like that. Rachel Sil- Silver says that's literally not what he said. Well, I'm I'm only going off what we just said. I don't know what Brad said, but I don't I don't think I don't. I, I, this is a device that's going to happen. It's gonna, it's gonna be a thing. Okay, Rachel Silver says he said that getting it onto Roku would be big. Well, the, the thing is, you can just put the Xbox Game Pass app onto Roku if you want to do that, right? You know, so Keystone is a is a sort of 
it's a it's an operating system. It's a Windows based operating system. So I don't think you get the entirety of Keystone onto Roku, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe like they could do like a, a version that could be installed on a Roku or be installed on a on a NAS or something like that. I don't know. But I think Keystone eventually translates into a, a home streaming console and eventually a handheld console. I think we're going to get both. I think we're going to get first, we're going to get a streaming console. And I think we're going to get a, a, a streaming handheld eventually as well. That's where I believe. And that's what I think they should do. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm just looking for idle sloth tweets to quote tweet here. Please don't. Why? Um, Prediction. Ran thinks that Wolfstein isn't going to the show because they're busy with Indiana Jones. Oh no, that's got me in it. I just want to... Okay, here we go. Ran thinks there will be a Fallout presence at the showcase. Whether it's Fallout 5 or a remaster trailer. Alright, let's quote tweet this. No! Insider confirms! No, don't... Come on, don't do that. That's not Oh nice. my god! Ugh. Shocker, and here's some waffles. We're putting some waffles in there as well. There we go. The Winter Soldier says... <laughs> Hey Jez, when You're can we slot. when you when can you when can we expect your Windows Central article about Japanese users and what Xbox can do better in Japan? Yeah, so I've been working on this for a while and I've dis- I decided to delay it until after the showcase because I think like if there is a big presence from Jap- J- Japanese games at the showcase, it could potentially change the context of the article, right? So I'm waiting until after the showcase before I put some conclusions on that. So expect to see that the week after the showcase. Okay. Yeah, people are dropping those waffles in chat. Let's see the waffles, baby. You're the only waffle, one who's waffle, been waffling waffle. this whole show. No, you were waffling. No. You're saying you saying your 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 Fallout leak is just a prediction now. Yeah. Early on the show oh. you said it was a leak. No, I didn't. I said <laughs> this is all predictions. Yeah, so so for any for any any video game Blogs that are listening to this, Rand literally said that Fallout was leaked earlier. No, I didn't. But now he's saying it's a prediction, so... Everything... I mean, this ty- this podcast is titled Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase Predictions. Not leaks. Oh, you changed the title. Well, when we started the show, it was Xbox Fallout Leaks Show Podcast. <sighs> I can't believe Rand just changed the title of the show. So yeah, <sighs> Game Journalist, you can put that in there, your articles too. Rand the Insider changed the title because he was walking back and waffling around waffling around randall waffle That's, yeah. <laughs> east, east, <laughs> east coast says stalker does good do you expect xbox to buy the studio and fund build them up would stalker be a big ip mm, i i know that microsoft has been investing a lot into gsc game world they helped them you know they've helped them a lot out because of the, russia's aggressive evil invasion of ukraine um they've been helping them out a lot and um you know so i think that that's gonna help solidify a relationship there i think so i want to believe that yeah they'll they'll continue supporting them and um you know it's 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 not even about the games at that point it's about people's livelihood and their lives and stuff like that so i really like what microsoft's doing to support them there so yeah um it's just depressing have you seen the sonic uh sonic frontier gameplay that ign's been showing i have yeah i was watching that earlier um i'm a massive sonic fan you know as a, as a kid i was not a mario kid i was a sonic kid i didn't give a crap about mario it was all about sonic and going fast baby but then 3D Sonic came around, and I was like, "What the hell is this? This is not Sonic. This is this is garbage." So I'm someone who always sort of hated the 3D Sonic games, like even from like the first 3D Sonic game. I think it was just it was like isometric. It was like 2D isometric Sonic. And I, what was it? I think it was literally wasn't it just called Sonic 3D? I think I hated that. I hated that game. And um, you know, so I. I'm sort of cautiously optimistic that they'll actually make a good 3D Sonic game because I've I've hated all of them, you know. And I, I I apologize to people who grew up with 3D Sonic because for them that's their Sonic, you know. The 3D Sonic is their Sonic, but for me it was always 2D Sonic, and I love Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania was great, but all the other Sonic modern Sonics are terrible. But who knows? Maybe they'll nail it. 
maybe they'll nail it and it'll be really really good Man, and i'll be proven wrong and stuff the the i watched the gameplay uh, it's that seemed like a college student's Unreal Engine demo with Sonic in it. Like, I just... Wow. I, I don't like the art That's style. Harsh, man. I didn't. I did not like... The, I, I was teasing Everborn because he's such a huge Sonic fan. I'm like, this is your king? This is what we're doing here? I just, <laughs> it's just... I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that game, man. Uh, JD Gamer in the Super Chat says, agree, to, agree or disagree, Xbox can improve worldwide... By having native language support in more countries and release in more territories at the same time as English speaking territories. I mean, having your console available in more places with more language support is important. So, I mean. Yeah. Xbox, we always bang on at Xbox that they need to improve their localization and. They have been hiring in other places. I saw I saw job listings go out for China recently and job listings for Japan and stuff like that. Um, oh, Rand, you are screwed, man. People are liking the hell out of this tweet. And everyone's playing along too. They're saying, oh my God, the man with the million leaks. And uh, yeah, people spamming the waffle emojis. Incredible inside of Rand does it again. Here we go, Rand. This is it. This is <laughs> your moment, baby. I hate you. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> so was this Tommy Fallout at the Bethesda Showcase? Hashtag Insider. It's you, man. This is your future, baby. But it's, it's, you know what's hilarious about this? If there's Fallout there, and if Final Fantasy VII's there, and it's a game and game pass, you're everyone's going to think that you you you're an insider, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but a Fallout... so you can't, you kind of damn you kind of damned both ways because you don't want people to think you're insider. So like if people if you see all that and then you won't be able to make a prediction again because people will be like, oh my god, Randy really is an insider. And if you're wrong, people are gonna come here because you're wrong. Yeah, well, Them's the ropes, man. You know, I just look. I mean, Fallout That's seventy terrible. Fallout seventy six could be at the show, and I'm still right. It would be a Fallout presence, isn't not? I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> Yeah, they did. They, that, they, there, the was there was a follow presence. There was a follow presence at last. The last show they did show off the expansion for the pit, didn't they? So I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Ugh, I hate you. JD Gamer says, "Would Sonic be better served with 2D and 3D titles, meaning push both series forward for the respective fans, a la Sonic Mania and Sonic Adventure?" I mean. Sonic is, I think, always better in 2D with limited 3D stuff, personally. I think there's there's a universe where it could work in 3D, but you need a really good dev and a really good vision and really good combat. And you can't just... I really hate this trend in modern gaming where, where they're like, okay, the next stage for this game is open world. But they don't know what that means. They try and make an open world game and they don't know what it means. You know, they don't know how to make it good. They think just slapping open world on a game will automatically make it good. But that's not how it works. You have to make a good open world game. Ubisoft didn't get this memo, you know. <laughs> but um, maybe it can be good. Maybe there's a world where it's good. And um, I hope they find it. I hope they find that world. Because I want to live in a world where 3D Sonic is good, you know. And the the franchise has got more hype behind it than ever because of the the movies, which are inexplicably great. You know, I really, really like the Sonic movie, but I'm also a massive Jim Carrey stan, man. I, I'm a, I'm a Jim Carrey stan, fanboy. I even like Cable Guy. I think Cable Guy is a great movie. Mm. I'm on a tangent now. Yes, you are, uh, Jacques. Dude, Lund what's with, what's with these? Bambots, man. Jeez. I don't know. They keep on subscribing. Jocelyn Brand says, Hey, Pinks, who is the best rock yell? Uh, I don't know. Ooh. Best rock that's... yell. Man, I like the first... When people ask me these kind of questions, I usually try and reply with the thir first thing that pop into my head. And Maynard James Keenan from Tool popped into my head. Yeah. And just thinking about Tool's like the live version of Push It. If you look up that on YouTube, it's absolutely mind blowing. Like the the guy's sustain is just crazy. But 
Yeah. I'm going to say Maynard, even though he's a bit of a dick, he's a really great front man. So, yeah. Anyways. You got, you got, you got one? No, huh? I don't have one. You know, no, I don't have one. I, I, it's we're getting we're, it's, we're almost at four hours here. I think I think it's time to end the show. No Let's more go for another hour. No more Let's tweets. Go for another hour, man. No, 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 no more tweets about anything. For another hour. Let's come on, come on, come on. No, we, we got, got nothing more to that. say. There's nothing more to talk about. There's tons to talk about. Let's just let's just talk about music for an hour. I'm down. Let's do that. Yeah, no. I thought you'd I thought you'd say Lane Lane Staley from from Alice in Chains. He's my no. number two pick. No, 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 no. Actually, to be fair, no, no thinking about it. He's my number one pick. You know, I'm no? gonna, I'm gonna, bl- you know I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna block Idol Sloth from now on. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's for real. I'm gonna block Idol Sloth. Nobody's gonna tweet out, tweet out what we're talking about on this podcast. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, poor, poor Idol Sloth. Gonna, no I'm more sloth things. No, no, I got sloth today, man. <sighs> I. I just lost. I just lost the man. He's been. He's been on all these pre- these leaks. From <laughs> they're not <laughs> leaks. They're just predictions. What the? F- what? It- <sighs> uh, okay. I will call them waffles. They're just waffles. Oh jeez. All right. Anyways, we will be back next week on Friday with uh, you know <laughs> guests. I'm gonna try to get some guests talk about what they expect for the show and all the all the good stuff. So join us then. And uh, hopefully you guys have a good rest of the weekend. And uh, keep it gaming, everybody. Jazzy, got anything to say before before we get out of here? And don't you dare say anything about waffling or anything. Mm, keep it gaming, guys, and watch out for those waffles. Oh, Jesus. I hate oh, you. Shit. I just dropped my cup. <laughs> yeah. Later, everyone. Take care, everybody.